been a while oh man what is up <laughs> what's going what's on that, fellas? Man. hey what that, polo and cam i heard y'all got a little bit of that white stuff and not the legal kind i'm you know not that contraband i'm talking about like man. that cam, fluffy cam the- what'd you he say polo that stuff that- cam sent that stuff down here <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you had that earlier in the day. You had that before I got it. <laughs> Yo, so so early this morning we got a dusting of it, and it was just like a dusting, but it, it came down really quick and it went away. Now we got almost like two inches. Dang, it, huh. it wasn't it wasn't snowing. It wasn't snowing around like three o'clock. But now we got like two inches out there right now, and it's still coming down hard. And I'm like, man, go on it, Cam, and sit that white stuff down there. <laughs> man, that snow, I can't stand it, man. I can't stand it, man. People driving like they live in Atlanta, man. Excuse me, people. Excuse my Atlanta folks. <laughs> no excuse, no excuse. Y'all done got more snow than me. And I'm in Germany. It's supposed to be colder than here. I mean, I guess it all depends on where you're at, latitude-wise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, latitude-wise, I'm supposed to be right there with you, Cam. Like, it's supposed yeah. to be the yeah. same environment, but that whole global warming thing is real. It's real. Yo, man, you can you can have some of this snow if you want. Nah, I'm good. I, I, I'm good. That, that's I'm what good. I was going to say. They can ship all up across the water because I don't want no parts of this. <laughs> Polo, uh, they saying your audio is a little low, so I know you can tweak that a little bit, maybe on your on your side. Other than that, in the chat, um, how is the audio sounding full and through? We don't have any reverb or anything like that going on. Please let me know because I can adjust it sooner than later. Outside yes, of that, sir, I got Mike. I threw a poll up for people uh, for the show tonight. Um. Do you know what growing degree days are? Have you ever heard of it? Have you ever heard of this concept? Um, I just want a yes or no. Just co- I can like judge the chat as far as where everyone's experience is. Our guest this evening is Ryan DeMay, a professional that's been doing it and doing it for a very long time. He has a wealth of knowledge and he is providing that wealth of knowledge to us this evening for free. Um, so he's at your disposal. <laughs> he's back there laughing. All right. <laughs> he's at your disposal for the evening. Um, if you have any questions, definitely. Free 99. <laughs> free 99. If, he, if you have any questions, write them down. Uh, audio is good. Great. Uh, Polo fell off. He'll be back. He'll be back. And then we'll move forward. Um, but if you have any questions, please jot them down. Um, in the end, at the end of this, we're going to deep dive on the questions a little bit more. If we, it's a bit choppy. Okay. All right. I'm sure the internet will catch up. You know, I got that. 
I got that dial up over here. I'm doing my best. I'm doing. <laughs> he moved. He moved all the way to Germany and and took that dial up with him. <laughs> Y'all gonna dial up all the way from that's hell fair. To with. That's fair. I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve that. Oh, um, hey man, me... if you're gonna cheat, cheat and get you some good internet. That's there we what go. You can cheat and get. There we... <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I'm gonna uncheck this, close that. That might help it out a little bit. And then, yeah, like I said, we, we, we're going to talk about growing degree days. We're going to talk about how you could apply that as a gardener and a lawn care enthusiast, um, which I think is cool. We're going to bridge the gap on both of those niches. Uh, you know that I'm involved in both of those niches. So uh, I think it's going to be pretty helpful. Um, so, you know, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring our guests on while Polo gets situated and uh, introduce uh, the man of the hour. All right, so uh, let's bring him on. There he is. Gentlemen. What's up, my Gentlemen. man? What is, what is how, up? How are we doing? <laughs> right. How are we doing? How you doing, brother? Dude, I am great. It's uh, It's been a busy week. It's this is a great way to cap it off, have a couple drinks with some cool dudes, talk a little bit of turf. You there know, you go. He's right, he's right into that weekend, so I am pumped. I'm excited. And you guys picked some good topics, man. Like you didn't take it easy on me. Like I, I appreciate like, you know, my brain feels like mashed potatoes right now. And we're going <laughs> to deep dive into some growing degree days and speech. But I seriously, I love it. I think, uh, you know, turf, you pick some good topics because you're right. Like it does cross over a lot really in any area of horticulture, you know, as far as the growing degree day thing goes and PGRs too. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say wasted work, but you know, tree, some trees, some shrubs, and things like that around the landscape, like can also benefit too on the PGR side if you dive, if you dive a little bit deeper in it. But uh, excited to be here! I, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm worldwide now, man. Like I feel, I feel special. Like <laughs> in I'm in two continents right now. You know, hey, listen, I gotta, I gotta say this real quick, and I'll, I'll plug it real quick, but. You know, our uh, the Burn and Return podcast that I have with Matt and Ray, we are, I think, like number 19 in Bulgaria. So what? I mean, Bulgaria. We have Bulgaria. Presence. Bulgaria. Bulgaria. What are they famous for? Um, rose. Oil. I don't know, but that's what rose oil. That's I'm telling you, because I've been rose everywhere. Oil. Well, I've almost been everywhere. Right. Rose oil. They they rose oil. they grow a lot of roses, produce a lot of rose oil. When I went there. I brought mm -hmm. rose oil back for the wife, uh, like rose perfume, like rose, rose actually costs more per, by the barrel. It costs more than, um, oil I've and heard honey. about that before. Yeah. I've heard about that before, but yeah. you're laying it on thick. You're turf, laying it on thick. 3000. This is turf 3000. Right <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's Palmer a background laid story on. behind that one. Yeah. yeah, give them the background story on that. <laughs> Turf so, 3, so there's a background story of why we call them Turf 3000. Oh, so Lordy. Turf 3000, the reason we call them that is like Turf done been here for 3000 years. <laughs> like Turf, Turf, Turf's done lived so many lifetimes and he's just like the history book or like the, the, the old encyclopedias when you used to have the yeah. bookshelf and then they're yep. just like, shelves and shelves of yeah that's that's turf 3000 you remember right like you remember that like epiphany like when that thing all then fit on like one cd rom and you'd put mm -hmm. that stuff in your cd rom on that like windows 95 computer it'd be like oh wow like i can watch videos yeah. and look up abraham lincoln and do all this other crap like that's turf turf is our cd rom right <laughs> yep. and that's why listen that's why for real when you retire from from service you're gonna be our tour manager, man. We're gonna start. I got we're you. Do, we're gonna do a live show. We're gonna start in <laughs> Bulgaria, and we're gonna go all around the world. All right. We're gonna have like, remember when the roll, uh, like you know, the Rolling Stones had that plane with the tongue and the lips all painted on. Yeah. We're gonna paint on it. Yo. So but while something you're probably, saying that, oh, here we go. Turf yeah. three thousand. I was in Edelweiss 3, 000, man, last man. time I was here. <laughs> They got, oh, I get it. I they got get the it. whole Rolling Stone lips. They got this huge banner out there. 
in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah, Ryan, you know. I'm gonna just I, say I earned my thousand. See, this, I, this is this is where he gets it from. That, you, can't bring that like, single, you can't bring a single topic up that he can't directly gonna... relate to it and be like, yeah. So I was there. You remember when that happened? <laughs> like, yo, I was there when Jesus that... was born. Yeah, I had frostbite. Yeah. It was yeah. Me, me, <laughs> me and the boys, we were kicking it in the back, and then Mary was like, "I think my water broke." <laughs> right. No, right, but yeah, for real, so... for real. You know what this is gonna be, Cam? This is what I cannot wait for, right? Because serves to dad now. I cannot wait for the day. You know, we'll we'll tell his son someday, like, "Hey, this is why we call your dad Turf Three Thousand." And you know that kid, just like anybody, he's gonna blow it off. He's gonna be like, "Ah, whatever." Yeah, yeah. And then there's gonna be a moment when he's about twelve or so, thirteen years old, and he's and and. Turf's going to launch into something and his son's going to look over at you and you're going to look at him and be like, I told, told you. you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, thank you guys for entertaining us, getting acquainted this evening. Um, Ryan, for the people who have no idea who you are, which would only really be my uh, gardening audience in here tonight, throw, throw your zones up. If, you in, if you're in here from the gardening community, throw your garden. Throw your zones up. The USDA grow zones. Throw them up. Let me see you in the chat while uh, Ryan DeMay gives us a quick spill on who he is and what he's about. Go ahead, Ryan. All right. So I am, uh, well, first of all, I think I'm breaking some barriers here, too. I'm probably the heaviest guest that's ever been on the show. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, I can be self deprecating too, Robert. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, Ryan DeMay, I am uh, born and raised in Ohio, lived here all my life. Um, and oh, you know, it, it, I, oh. oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, when we get offline later, I want to hear your turf 3000 Ohio stories. I can't wait for that. So, um, you know, uh, like Robert said, I've been in a business a long time. Um, you know, not, not to go like whole life story, college lecture series here or anything like that, but. Uh, I started when I was 12 years old on a golf course. I had family friends that owned a golf course, and they asked me, hey, you want to go make some money? And I started out there uh, weed-eating, line trimming around trees and stuff, and uh, slowly fell in love with it and decided I wanted to go to school for it when I found out that you could go to school for it, like in college. And so I did that. I went and got a two-year degree from Ohio State and then was working for a couple more years on a golf course, you know, for that entire time and decided I wanted to go back and get it. Uh, my bachelor's degree, so I finished up that, uh, also at Ohio State, and then was in golf in total for almost 16 years, and I got out of that and went to uh, work for a major park system down here, taking care of all their sports fields, and got exposure to the sports field side of things, and then about, uh, let's think here, four years ago, uh, almost, I started a company on the side, like a little side hustle of you know, helping people do the things I really like to do in my day job there uh, with the parks and the sports fields and all that, uh, consulting and, you know, helping them build stuff and construct new fields, improve the fields they had, coaching and training their staff, so all that kind of stuff. And uh, fortunately, it grew and grew and grew and got to the point where last year I had a decision to make of do I stay or do I go? And so I went and, you know, I'm young enough that uh, I can do things like that and feel very grateful and blessed that, you know, uh, I can get paid uh, to have to tell people how to grow the plant that uh, is the most adaptable, most amazing, uh, and uh, I don't know, wildest thing that I, I know how to grow anyway. And I don't know how to grow much other than grass, but uh, you know, it's uh, I am a nerd through and through. I love I love the plant. I love what it can do. I love that uh, you know it provide it provides a lot for us. You know, it provides a lot environmentally for us, right? Uh, from a standpoint of, you know, uh, producing oxygen, you know, for atmosphere, capturing carbon, being a carbon sink, being a filter, you know, for so many pollutants that would go into the ground or go into waterways otherwise. I love that it provides, you know, a, a noise barrier in a concrete jungle of a city. You know, it provides a place for people to have fun on their lawns at home, to go out to a ball game and watch people compete, to go to a golf course and have fun and play out there with your friends, your buddies or whatever. So like, you know, it is one of the most widely adapted crops, right? Not just in terms of environment of where it can grow, what it can do and everything like that, but just the enjoyment it can provide. And, you know, here we are, you know, four grown ass men sitting here on video talking about it on a Friday night at six o'clock. Like what else would we rather be talking about gentlemen? That's my question. I know. I mean, I don't, know what else i'd be to oh there's something i would like that i mean you made this statement about 
you know, me possibly retiring. Um, and I got some really good news <laughs> last week. And mm-hmm. I got MQ'd out of 200 and what was it, 66, 67 EOD techs in the E7 rankings for mm-hmm. E8. I was MQ'd mm-hmm. in, in the military world that's most qualified, which puts me in the top 5% to get promoted for E8. So that was a heck of an achievement. And when we have actually order of merit lists and Mm -hmm. out of the order of merit list right now, I'm currently number 13 out of 266. So that's that's amazing. That's pretty, that's pretty dope. (laughs) Like that was, no seriously, like that's, you know, my brother's in the military. We've talked about this before. Turf, you and I have. You know, he's in he's in the ar- army as well. Uh, he's a major right now. Yeah. But and I understand like, you know, that those promotions are big deals, man. Like you got to in the in especially where you're at, you know, uh, on your side of it, on the east side, man. Like, it gets really difficult when you get up there to to stand out and be recognized. So like seriously, for those of you that are listening that that you know that aren't uh, you know affiliated or know somebody that is in the military like that is a big deal like what what turf has done so thank you for your service thanks for hey thanks for being good at making shit not blow up let's start with <laughs> there that. we go because no. people yep. i'm glad you said that because people assume my job is to blow things up and it's actually the exact opposite like my job is to keep yes. things from blowing up but I'll blow something up real quick if I have a chance to. So, you know, <laughs> listen, there was no other way, boss. I had to do it. I mean, yeah. I, had to. I, had to. I know that Kalat wall was right there, but I just, I mean, we had to get through there. So you know, write the them a check. The good thing is, I think, I think, as you say, typically in a combat zone, there's not too many Karens that are going to come out and be like, I want to see your manager. <laughs> like, I don't think that's going to be a thing. No, so, no, uh, all right. no. So we got a whole guess. bunch of uh, we got a whole bunch of um, very uh, motivated LTs. That's about it. That's your closest thing to a Karen. Um, <laughs> we'll, call them, we'll call them Keiths. We'll call. The Keiths. <laughs> there we go. I like I like Karen. Karen. So check it out. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, Growing Degree Days. I've been running a poll. I need to open and back up. Uh, I closed it for the sake of bandwidth. Um, I'll go back to it. But the last time I saw it, start out with, you know, what is, what are, is the better question, what are Growing Degree Days and how did it originate? Like, where did it come Mm -hmm. from? that's a and it's a fantastic question. I think, like I said, it's a great foundational thing to understand from a horticultural perspective because, you know, there there's no rules when it comes to horticulture, right? Uh, the only rule is, and Robert, I think we talked about this before. <laughs> I think we might have talked about this with everybody here. The only rule in horticulture is the only thing that happens quickly is crop failure, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, I think right, I so think Cam has that, some firsthand experience with that. <laughs> He's that, that, that was a shot, there. That was a shot. Think about that, all right? It's too tight. <laughs> gotcha. Let's keep those promises. All right. <sighs> so, uh, so growing degree days are a measurement that we use for something that's bigger. Let's talk about where those come from, right? And that is phonology. So that is P H E O N O L G Y. Yeah, I think I spelled that right. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't going to ask you for a language of origin or to use it in a sentence, so we're good there. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, phenology is the study of plants and when certain uh, physiological events happen with those plants. And it can also be insects, too. Like, it can also be plant diseases. It could be weeds. Like, we understand a lot more about this now because they've researched it and, and ground truth it in different locations of the country, growing, uh, uh, growing zones and things like that. So we've all seen a maple tree. It sits there over the winter time and then hey those big red buds come out right and it starts to bud out like those buds just start to break from the twigs and then they fully flower out and then they drop leaves start to come out leaves go on the seedlings come out right the helicopters and everything like that well that's all happening on sort of like a cadence in nature right and we call that cadence phenology and the way that we track that right so uh is a way where we use growing degree days now growing degree days are a measurement 
uh, to figure out how much growth should have taken place based on uh, a certain temperature range that we've had day by day and then measure that against the base, right? So the easiest way to figure this out is uh, take the high temperature and the low temperature for a day. Okay, so let's just say, oh, say 65 and 35, right? And those are degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And then let's say we divide those by two. Okay, so 65 minus 35 is 30. We're gonna divide that by two, that's 15, okay? And then we're going to add that to a base temperature, right? All right, and that's going to give us our growing degree days. So, uh, actually, subtract that from the growing degree days. We subtract the base from our growing to get our growing degree days. I'm sorry, I'm screwing myself up. I told you it was mashed potato brain. <laughs> All right, so we subtract that number from our growing degree days, and that gives us our total number. Okay. So that being said, those accumulate over the course of uh, of time, right? Uh, so whenever we start, we pick a date and we start February 1st, we start uh, March 1st, we start when a certain event happens, right? And it differs depending on where you're at in the country and what type of uh, base temperature in a little while. They use uh, centigrade, they use uh, Celsius, right? And use a zero degree. So that's why I was talking in typical terms on Fahrenheit scale, 32 and 50 are sort of our base numbers that we use for different things that take place. And I'll show you some cool tools here in a little bit of how to track this and some of the other nice things you can do with it. So the growing degree day portion, you can get this information from a variety of sources. Okay. So I know I'm pretty sure Syngenta Greencast is now able to do this. Uh, yeah. The green um, I pulled up some examples here on the screen. Um, All right. There you go. We got yep. a Syngenta one up right now. Um, in, which I okay. actually had a question yep. about when they come to their mm -hmm. cumulative uh, growing degree days versus just your um, mm -hmm. so one thing that I'm seeing over here on the daily gr growing degree days which Sagenta lets you run out about 60 days that's what I'm seeing on Sagenta um, I was actually able to set it for the V's bottom location which was cool um not all of mm -hmm. the services out there allows you to go international. So that's one pro about Sagenta. Um, but when I came over to the smart farming one, their numbers seemed like so much higher. I was like, how are you getting 2000 growing degree days? And then I dug a little deeper and the idea is what, well, what I didn't know was farmers when, when they purchase seeds, Usually yeah. when you're yep. getting them on an agricultural level, they will tell you how many growing degree days you need in order for that crop to be successful. Um, That's correct. So I was like, wow. So you can really dial that thing in to the point where like if you plant seeds on, let's say, May 10th and you still mm -hmm. haven't seen any germination on May 25th you can go to a growing degree day calculator, put in your high and low temperatures, and then come to a conclusion that, oh, I don't need to panic because I haven't had the proper amount of growing degree days or units for germination to actually take place. And if you have had the proper amount of growing degree days, um, then at the same time, you can go start digging around and figure out what possibly went wrong. So I thought that was mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, and that's just another way that it's used in ag, right? So uh, yeah, corn in particular, I mean, it, it, it varies by crop, obviously, of what you want to do, but you'll definitely see that, you know, depending on when uh, farmers are able to plant, you know, they're typically or on bigger farms are going to stagger, you know, those crops to where some of them are able to harvest early, some of them are a little bit later, and things of that nature, right? So it's definitely from a cropping system standpoint. I'm gonna throw this. I'll see if I can share. I don't, can I share my screen? No, now? but you can send me a link and I can pull it up. I will do that. I will yeah. do that. Drop and, it in our little chat over here, and I will do that. And I'm going to yeah. show you. This is for Ohio, and there's other ones that are out there um that are pretty good let me go ahead and drop it in the chat real quick okay boom and I'll pull all right it for you so 
this is pretty cool, at least for, you know, from folks in Ohio, and this has been sort of tried and true here for a while, where, uh, again, these events that take place, right? So when you click on this link, you'll be able to put in a zip code, and I'll give you a generic one here to kind of stick in. And the idea here, again, is that these different events happen. So you can look at you know, certain uh, blooms of different trees that are getting ready to bud out, things of that nature. Right when um, you know crabgrass is going to flower, when it's going to germinate, things like that, and we'll go through a little bit of a turf example here next, and look at that. But it's really super helpful to understand uh, that again, this whole cadence that takes place each year, you know, from new growth through the summertime, full bloom flower, all the way through you know senescence in the plant, you know, sort of going to bed for the winter or dying off if it's an annual, is pretty predictable. Uh, now the weather's not always predictable, but again, that cadence that the the plants follow, right, and the uh, you know grasses, weeds, everything really that's growing uh, that they follow is pretty interesting and pretty unique uh, by species. Hey Ryan, I didn't get your link. I'm not sure where oh. you drop it. Oh, it can't. Did you oh, drop it I in the it private inside. chat oh. or did you? Oh, uh, I didn't drop. No, I did not drop it in the private chat. <laughs> the YouTube chat, so it probably got blocked. Oh yeah, it, it got blocked. <laughs> You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, here we go. I'm looking for it, like, where is it at? I don't see no. it. No. I was going to say, and I didn't even see it pop up dude. just yet. So. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, it's, in our, it's in our Discord chat. So take a peek at that and throw that up. I like how you waited. I you wanted you to finish finish your point, you know. That no, was, you're good. It was an important point. Oh. <laughs> it is. It's, you know, and I'll be honest, you know, from a... Uh, uh, I was always using this for trees, you know, a lot, especially on the golf course. Not so much, uh, you know, uh, shrubs and things like that or uh, other herbaceous plants. But, you know, it can't, it, like I said, it can be a useful tool for anybody that needs it. You know, the other thing, too, is we, you know, work towards turf in general and how it's used, right? So if you guys have ever heard, you know, the old wives' tale of, hey, you need to apply your pre emergent when the forsythia blooms, right? Well, that's around for a base 32. I want to say it's about 50 or 60 growing degree days uh, when we're talking about Fahrenheit. So go ahead and put in uh, 43201. That's the center of Columbus. And let's show this real quick. So this is telling you the things that are coming up. It tells you where we're at. But go ahead and click up at the top where it says full, view full calendar. Let me punch in a little bit more so people watching yeah, on the phone go. can so see. <laughs> And you said yeah. click on what? View full calendar? Go ahead and click on that. Yeah, click that. Okay. And then you can slide through and look at all the events that are going to take place. So, you know. Oh, this is you've nice. Got, yeah. Yes. yeah. So you've got <gasps> you've got pests that are that are bolded. So right? is this saying the pests. For, the cipher, for the silver maple to <clears throat> start blooming, it needs 34 cumulative yep. growing degree days. In order to make that happen correct and that is correct and the other thing with growing degree days is they never go backwards right so let's say we have two right now and it's supposed to be really really cold here uh tomorrow you can see we right. don't lose any cumulative right. gdd we right. only go up okay yep. so for the folks at home that are scoring along that's that's the way it goes so yeah once we get to 34 that'll be our first uh horticultural event really of the year is the silver maples the earliest to bloom so as you go down through there, you can see that the pests are bolded, right? So uh, you got white pine weevil, that's adult uh, emergence, that eastern tent caterpillar, which is a real bugger, uh, egg hatch at 92. So, so, so you go down through here, there's a lot of different things. You place. can take this, I mean, I'm thinking of even just, because my mind for growing degree days, the only thing I've really been concerned with is the growth of my vegetables or my turf. But what you're telling me as an applicator, right, mm -hmm. it takes it to a whole new level when I have all these different accounts, maybe, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm yeah. tracking yeah, my growing degree days. And yes. now yeah. we're talking about saving our customers money. We're talking mm -hmm. about saving ourselves time. And mm -hmm. we're talking about being more responsible applicators, not spraying things at the times that some youtuber let's just say i told you to to spray yeah. at a certain point of time without having 
all of the context to the situation. Exactly. So this is what, this is fire. What, yeah. So what <laughs> this has <laughs> taught us? I, I, no, go ahead, Cam. Go ahead, Cam. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll no, I, I, I wanted because like we're gonna jump into the PGRs later, but I'm glad we got this information here because this will definitely come in hand when we start talking about PGRs, and not only oh, yeah. for just turf. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and not yeah, just mean, with. Hey, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for catching that chat camp. Who is that? Transylvania. Thank Transylvania you. Um, hope it helps, my friend. It's definitely going to help because these diapers are not cheap. Like we're mm. <laughs> burning through them, uh, burning through them. I want to find the Japanese beetle. Just control F that bad boy. Contr oh yeah, let's do that. Boom. It's command F, this Mac world over here, baby. Let's, let's get it. Oh, my <laughs> God. God. All right. We're not, we're not going to get into this, okay? Not here. So, not now. So, so Ryan, I, I got to yes, admit. Sir. I got to admit. That, that Mac. Oh, no. I, it's, not, I, it's not search. Oh, let me do this. Go ahead, Cam. Go ahead and let them know what the I truth am, is. Yeah, I am now a <laughs> Mac-only person. I'm not oh, going full yeah. Apple, but I do have... Oh, there it is. I'm Mac now. That's why I spoke Japanese. Oh, man. That was a problem. And I and I you can't gonna... stand it right now, other than my export time <gasps> on my videos. That's the only that's the only thing I'm I loving. Say about. That, that, I will say that that it's easy if you're a content creator, it is pretty easy. I mean, I'll give you that. So there you yeah. go. Jap Beetle Dalton merges nine hundred and seventy. Nine hundred and seventy days. Uh Steel Cut says yeah, so. so is there a GDD target for first pre M app? Yeah. Oh, we're going to get into that. Oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah, Just absolutely. Uh, and there's a cool tool dope. outside of the one that we're currently looking at. There's this mm -hmm. cool tool, uh, the Green Capper, Greenkeeper app. And in this yep. Greenkeeper app, it kind of lets you know when particular things are emerging. If you set up your profile properly, mine is very... Mm -hmm green right now because i have a whole new place <laughs> there's nothing really happening as you can see right here in my in mm. my profile what my weather looks like i don't really have any growth potential right now um but like ryan said we'll get into that a little bit later let me go back over to this super awesome cool tool for the moment though i've got a so, question i got a question really quick yes, ryan um go ahead, when, when when you're when you're using let's just say the green cast app um, mm -hmm. is, does your base temperature have to always be at 50 or is it 32? So it can change, right? Depending on what you're looking at. So I'm going to, okay. I'm going to ask you to hold that question until I okay. show you this next tool, because gotcha. that's the one that will, will really bring this all together. And I like it better than Greencast for a variety of reasons. And I'll explain why here in a few minutes. So the, the one thing I wanted to bring up with this is like, again, this is for Ohio, and so a, a couple of things on this is that I'm sure that you can find this in other states. I've never bothered to look because I've only ever lived here, and that's all I've ever had to know. So I'd encourage you to find out. If you don't know or can't find it, search for your state in phonology chart. Again, uh, that's P-H-E-N-O-L-O-G-Y, phonology, right, and see what you can find. There's some good resources out there, I'm sure. Uh, this hasn't really changed in a long time. The other thing, too, that typically that they'll do, you know, especially with these uh, land grant institutions like Ohio State and others around the country, is they will ground truth or ground test these, right? So let's just say that, you know, that's 970 right there for the growing degree days for the Japanese beetle adult emergence, right? It could have been that, you know, someone said, oh, hey, it's right around 1,000. And then Ohio State tested it and said, hey, we need to, you know, do this year over year over year and figure out where it's at. And they hone those numbers in and get them a little bit closer. So that's what you should see, number one. What that's done, you know, as a whole here in, you know, especially in turf, because, you know, uh, because of the way that products have been marketed for a long, long time and programs have been, you know, preached and things like that, you know, pre-YouTube, pre-lawn care YouTube, I mean, you know, the old Scott's program was basically, you know, apply Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day and a winterizer app. And that was it. Like that was your four step program. Mm -hmm. And so what what we have found is that the calendar based approach does not really work because 
as we said, weather is the great equalizer, but it's also the biggest variable. So this here allows us to do uh, much better in the way of like what you said, you know, perf is being a responsible applicator. So rather than saying, hey, you know, man, you need to look for uh, Japanese beetle adults, you know, right around Memorial Day or something like that. Well, it could be a week on either side of that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Or a whole month, case, depending on your region and your current yeah. climate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So with this, you can follow along. And this doesn't necessarily mean, hey, I get to 970 and I treat. I mean, you can definitely be like that if you want to. But for the most part, it's more in, this, in the light of, hey, I'm getting close to not, you know, in the 900s. I better start looking, right? Yeah. I better keep mm -hmm. my eyes peeled. Allows you to scout better, and that's practice. You know, you start to get to practice. You know, true integrated pest management or IPM, as you hear it referred to, mm -hmm. and that's really, really mm -hmm. how you do it. I so, love it. All right, so I, I, I want to jump. Me... I want to jump in here real second. Yeah. If, if y'all ain't got your handy dandy notebooks <laughs> and your pens out right <laughs> now, hey, hey, broke farmer, hey, hey, hey cousin broke, <laughs> hey man, I, I hope you got yours because I got mine over oh. here. Make sure you got your handy dandy notebooks out because <laughs> uh, Ryan is dropping some knowledge right now Rocking for you. us to, to make sure that, that we've been responsible, responsible with the applications that we make. It. Yeah, mean? yeah. I mean, it's only fair. It's only fair, you know, to to the folks. Like I said, that th I will say this is, uh, you know, uh, trust me. Uh, <laughs> guilty is probably not the right word, but I am uh, in part very responsible for calling out a lot of people on YouTube, <laughs> and uh, it's done not out of a place of hey, I'm here to troll people, make them feel bad about themselves or anything like that. It's just to say that listen, like the the science in the awareness mm -hmm. has evolved to a, so much of a greater level of detail mm -hmm. in the last you know 15 20 years that there's no excuse to not be doing this yeah. there's no excuse to be lazy about you know uh if i know i have a pest problem a particular pest problem there's no reason i can't research what it is how i need to scout for it how i can deal with it culturally first and then if i need to use you know pesticides control measures whatever I can do that appropriately. So that's the biggest take home message, I think, and where this fits in, uh, not only in terms of, you know, just uh, physiological uh, responses of plants related to it, but also too, from a pest standpoint, it can be a huge tool uh, in your arsenal to give you that knowledge, right? Because knowledge is power, yeah. right, gentlemen? Yeah, absolutely. Knowledge yeah. is power. A different phase of ag and different phase of growing where this technology and everything is, we have way more than what the previous farmers could even think about being able to predict. Oh, well, yeah. I just feel yeah, like this it, is and, and grounds for us to be a lot more responsible, especially with the things that we're applying, um, when we're going out making the applications. Like, it's, it's too easy to be more responsible if you just try a little bit right and, and that and that's the thing is like i don't expect somebody to like overnight instantaneously like change their entire outlook mindset or program to wrap their arms all the way around this but all i'm saying right is right. the right. hardest thing right, right the hardest step is that first one right so just pick something like yep. pick you know this is what i always tell folks like people always say hey man diseases like what should i do about fungicides and my number one thing i tell for somebody who and I know we're not supposed to, you know, necessarily talking about fungicides tonight, but it's it's sort of prescient to the issue at hand here is pick the worst possible disease that you have and figure out a plan on how to deal with that. Yep. Whatever else comes, it it is what it is. But like, you know, Robert, yep. for your point, like if you got if Jap beetles are a problem, figure out everything you need to do to target those. Right. And make sure that, you know, you're targeting not only the, the chemical piece, right, but also the cultural and the scouting piece as well. And I particular brought up the Japanese beetles for the gardening community in here. I know between Japanese beetles and them daggone aphids, those are the most hated pests in our gardens. So I just knew that that right there would interest a lot of the people <laughs> in the chat. JC, the hey. lawn care guy, he says this helps you zero in on specific aspects per se. Yes. Yes. Strong absolutely. yes. Absolutely. 
So we got and a new tool. I'm, I'm sorry. Go I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say what it also does is it, it gives you the tools to be able to do the work yourself and not depend on uh somebody coming out with something and you may be too late. You know, a lot of people And they just got you on a rotation. Right. They just got you they just got you on a rotation. Right. You know, a lot of a lot of people get and, and I said this on on a live uh, a previous live, you know, uh, last year the door somebody opened up the door for army worms and they got out there and they just tore everybody's lawn up. So this right here, mm-hmm. you know, talking about different pests, this can at least be in front of you where you can at least have the opportunity to look yourself or do the oppor- do the work yourself because if you've got hit with that or around like when you're talking about getting hit with uh the worst disease ever as far as pythium at least you know <laughs> okay now <laughs> i hey, know hey, hey. We, we're not gonna say that this. <laughs> okay I'm sorry. now I'm sorry. I will, here's, I'm sorry. i'll say this <laughs> is that diseases are different diseases are different and uh you won't find i don't know about like where it, where it stands with you know tree shrub and herbaceous plant diseases i don't know enough about those models to know where those stand as far as like if there's emergence things what we do know about turf though is that you know especially in the last oh five six seven years there's been some really dynamite uh models that have been developed right and a lot of those are built into greenkeeper app you know and i'm not going to show for them but i will say that it is probably the most advanced in terms of bringing all that together it's not foolproof but again you know the whole thing of a predictive model and cam i think you know this from like your work and previous places you've been is it ain't meant to tell you oh you need to go do something right now it's like hey listen if your ass ain't covered you better go out there and cover it right now you know what i mean or be on the lookout for this right so it's you know in in what that does too gentlemen is you know it builds your confidence to where you're anticipating stuff of oh hey like i'm looking at that weather and i don't even know you need to go look at greenkeeper app because i know that hey okay look at that nighttime low ooh 74 mm-hmm. ooh look at tomorrow nighttime low 77 boys we're in pythium season right now you know what i mean so like yeah. just stuff like that and diseases are very much it, it's it's uh too variable in terms of uh the gdd model right because it's cumulative that really doesn't have as much yeah. to do with uh, with all that. I th- I think there is some modeling out there related to GDD and like um, early season dollar spot control. So like it's something from the golf course. I know some of the some of this you could use in your lawn if you have a bad dollar spot. Fence against dollar spot. And again, I know we weren't supposed to talk about disease. I'm just gonna nerd out for one second, real quick. <laughs> That's, That's all good, I mean. man. Um, but like like on dollar spot, you know. Nitrogen is the big, is the biggest thing, the critical thing that you know. If you have uh, adequate nitrogen out there for the plant, when you go through those high pressure dollar spot times, that's going to be your first and biggest line of defense. You know, fungicides come later, but you know something that they worked on, you know, in the golf world. And gosh, this is now 20 years old, 20, you know, 20 year old research. But they, found if you went out, basically like early spring when they were doing this GDD modeling, it got to a certain point that if you sprayed. There was no sign of disease whatsoever. I mean, none. And it wasn't even dollar spot weather. But if you knock down that inoculum, right, that pathogen that was present that had overwintered in the thatch Mm -hmm. and eventually would get to the right conditions and blow up and become a problem for you, you knock down that inoculum, you could suppress it far longer into the summertime before it built up enough, you know, critical mass to actually do damage. And hopefully by then, you know, you'd be protected. You'd be on a fungicide program all that kind of stuff or have adequate nitrogen out there if you didn't already so you know there's a lot of research mm-hmm. that's taken place particularly in golf because it is such a high value crop but a lot of the stuff the lessons that we've learned for the most part generally speaking could be translated and uh transposed down into like lawn height turf and things like that so you know the gdd here on uh that that's center of columbus and we're gonna do there's a look back feature i think on this i don't know if we can go fat oh ahead or forward yeah i don't think there's a specific date so here's the nice thing about fine folks one of my uh most favorite uh big tent rivals michigan state spartans okay almost 40 years ago and did a lot of the specifically uh seed heads on poa annua so 
We'll talk is, about that in a minute. But is it possible that this website doesn't like Safari because it's not showing it me could, the map? It could be. Let me try and do it online. Let me, and let's see. Yeah, let me check it out because I want people to be able to see the map and. Thank y'all for bearing with us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but let's... Uh, a good, good photo. We can still click through and look at a couple things because there was a good question that I wanted to answer. Okay. About. So let's, while, while I'm looking for this picture, uh, you know, we can talk about it. So if you click through each one of these here, Turf, like go down to like Crabgrass Pre for a second. Okay. And it's giving you that, it's giving you that base temp right here. So can you click on Crabgrass Pre, GDD32. Uh, go ahead to weed flowering. Two steps down from there. Weed flowering. Boom. Yeah. Let's get there. I think a lot of these. So there you go. So that's a GDD fifty. So if you look right up there in the top. Of oh, the okay. Title, it's still showing it's us. You the, it's showing you the base. The yeah, information. So different models. So that, that's different cool. models have have have, let me, have let done me different bases. So, punch in so, so this is gddtracker.net. The nice thing about this gentleman is i'd encourage everybody to go to it i imagine that they're probably updating some data and things like that but it works across most of the uh, midwest northeast it's not so strong down to about maybe north south carolina something like that you should be able to get pretty good data on this and what this does is it shows you and bear with me when i try to pull this picture up so and for, for for the ones who are like, yo, where, where are all these links? I'm going to put them in the description of this video. So just circle back. I will have every single link. I'm keeping every browser open tonight. <laughs> and I'll have everything <laughs> linked in the description. If you're watching the replay, it's already there. If it's 24 hours yeah. later, give me 24 hours because I'm going to sleep after this and then I'll do it when I wake up. So, you know. <laughs> it's, weak, it's, weak, it's weak sauce. It's weak sauce. All right. <laughs> And actually, the good I'll news is, is Turf, Turf, Turf put in an extra two gigs of RAM so he could have 87 tabs open by the end of this thing. So Boom. I there we go. I think we should do that. <laughs> yeah. We've got a great deal. All right. Let me send you this picture because this is pretty, pretty solid view of what they will experience uh, as far as a user goes. Okay. And, we can and getting that over. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan, um, I just want to mention, like, so when, when we start talking – climate and gg gdds and and we're, we're all experiencing well i'm not say all but most of us are experiencing fairly warmer climates than what we have mm -hmm. in the past so when it starts mm -hmm. to come down to pre-emergence and all of that coming out of winter when you may be used to in your area saying hey i can go throw my pre-em down second first week of march or second week of march whatever that date may be now mm -hmm. with the climates and everything changing and if you're actually tracking your gdds you may have a better estimate of when you actually need to go put that that pre-emergent down is that accurate that's accurate and i think you know if, uh, there's uh, uh, several things that we can uh unpack uh shout out to my esteemed colleague mr martin for his favorite verb unpack <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I steal that um, word all the time too. <laughs> I know, I know, and I every time I hear you use it, I can hear you and Matt saying it in unison. You know, like you're <laughs> Let reciting me a poem this. together. <laughs> <laughs> like we're at the coffee house or something, and you're both wearing turtleneck sweaters or something. But shit, I don't know. He uh, said turtleneck. <laughs> I'll own it. I'll own it with I, pride. <laughs> I can see you wearing. I can see you wearing like a turtleneck sweater and uh, maybe like some corduroy pants. Ooh, yeah, I'd pay. I'd pay money to see that. Uh, but see, right, Matt's so, Matt's has got to cut his turtleneck's got a cut out in the middle. You know, he got to show his chest hair. He got to show his hamburger. He's got, he's he's got a big gold. He's got a big gold chain hanging down there that's tangled up in all the hair. So okay, yeah. now um, okay. So your question about pre merch it's a fantastic one, right? because you're right like it, it, it's it's much higher stakes now because uh not only are do are we generally warmer but we're also uh a little bit more varied right like we've had some cold springs in the south here as of late uh we've had some wild springs up here in the midwest and so you just don't know so when we pull up this graphic it'll it'll kind of help illustrate how these tools can help you but i would agree like working backwards right so let's talk about like the outcome. So 
let's just say in a normal year, like you put down your, you know, your pre-emergent on April 1st, you're just going to use an arbitrary date. Uh, I would track like what you see. And this is part of scouting too, is not just like, Hey, what is the app telling me? Or what is this? Like go out and see, like, where did I have, you know, crabgrass pressure this year? Where was it worst? Where was it not so bad? And track that. And, you know, relative to the date that you put it down, how many growing degree days you were like, all those factors are things that if you go back and reflect and observe, uh, you're going to have a much better uh, result in terms of understanding, um, you know, where your wins and losses are. Because the GDD is not going to tell you everything that you need to know, but it's certainly going right. to give you right. uh, a better front end view, a better front end view of how it is. You observing and, and taking notes and doing all that kind of stuff on the back end, that's the most important part to evaluate. Okay. So Just another tool in that toolbox. Absolutely, yes. man. I mean, and that's all you can. I mean, hey, listen though, a tool is not a tool if you don't know how to use it, right? That's true, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can use a jar for a hammer until a certain point, and then it becomes a weapon, right? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So take a look at this. This is uh, okay. this is the map that you would see. So it's starred on East Lansing. So you know. A nice thing about this is you can go in there and put in your zip code, uh, your, you know, it says ask for your organization or golf course, but you can just put in like Cam's, you know, Cam's house or something like that, whatever. And you can also set up email alerts too. So if you look here on the bottom, right, uh, it tells you under, early, optimum, late, done. Okay. And what this does is it knows your weather based on your zip code and it's giving you i think 10 days out eight days out something like that in terms of where it's projected to be as you accumulate more gdd right so you can see this one here this is for crabgrass pre-emergent 32 base gdd so 32 degrees fahrenheit yeah. and what it's doing is mm -hmm. as you go right so as we get to four nine right look at that star right there boom we're in the <laughs> optimum window now boom. cam to your point depending on how I want to deploy my uh, pre-emergent strategy. And quite honestly, I think, you know, the further south you are, the more that you want to consider a split application, right? And also to mm -hmm. consider which product that you're actually using, right? So, uh, you know, not to go too far down the wormhole here, but again, I have to take the exit ramp here. Polo takes those about 100, 105. Like we were talking <laughs> about that before the show about he's, he's downshifting <laughs> You know, he, he, he just the dude is literally like an F1 race car. He really uh, is in a human body. He is like I, I have like just talking to him and like hearing everything he does. And then talking to him when we met at GIO, it's like, man, I go fast. But this guy is this guy is going hard in the paint. Like he's 48 minutes a night in the NBA, you know, 82 games a year going hard in the paint like. <laughs> He's for real. All right. So if you were going – and if I was him, honestly, Polo, like I'd look at this for real. Like, you know, if you right. – I, I would totally be in the split app mentality, number one. You know, that's going to give you your best bang for your buck because if you do get some, you know, some waffling on the weather, things like that, you know, it sucks because you got to go back twice maybe on certain mm -hmm. lawns. But where you have high pressure, I would absolutely be on a split app regimen. If you've had a lawn that, is, you know, has not had a lot of pressure – over the years and you're pretty sure uh, that you've been pretty uh, that you've been fairly effective i'd be okay with doing a single app but he, you know here's what this does for you know somebody in your position especially a solo applicator it helps you plan out workflow right so right. depending on the product that i'm using so let's think about this like from a real practical standpoint okay prodiamine and and, and dithiopyr right barricade and dimension right if we want to use trade names okay barricade is a less soluble product takes longer for it to solubilize and get going. So you can basically be a little bit earlier with it and still be okay. That's the bottom line mm -hmm. with barricade, okay? Now, on the flip side with dimension, more soluble, gets going a little bit quicker, but doesn't last as long, okay? So, right. you know, where dimension excels is in a split app program. And for what I mean, you can absolutely use a split app program too. But if I was looking at this from a solo applicator perspective, lawns that I didn't have a ton of pressure on, I'd be fine. I'd be like, all right, we're going to roll out with prodiamine at you know a full rate one app boom we're done and before you know before i do those though i'm going to go out with dimension on a split app and make an application you know, on these high pressure lawns so first step out is dimension on a split app on my high pressure lawns then i go and i do them on my low pressure lawns with my prodiamine then i come back 
with a higher rate on my split app of dimension. And the nice thing about dimension is that we will get early post control on crabgrass that's at a two leaf stage. So if I'm spraying it, if I'm spraying it. So, uh, right. you know, you think about that. I know you just bought that permagreen. So a it polo could be green. So polo again, green. That polo green. Why yeah, say polo green? green. Oh, oh, uh, it's a polo that. green. We, yeah, we, we get that rebranded. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. in the works. It's in the works. It's in the works. It's in the works. I want yeah. listen. I want to see. I want to see this thing painted with like flames down the sides. <laughs> Maybe get like remember. I don't know. I don't know how old you all are. Like, I got a feeling you were all pretty close in age. But like in my in my community. If you had a Chevy Beretta with the leather bra on the front, like that was like your shit car. Like you, you was winning, you apps, <laughs> or or the uh, or the Firebird, right? Yes, yes, yes. You were yeah. right. you were absolutely getting the hottest chick in school to go to prom with you. Absolutely, I mean, no question about you it. You have won. I, you have arrived. Like you didn't even ask. You just point at the car and you're like, "I'll pick you up at eight. Yeah. So Ryan, <laughs> so, so for everyone in the chat who came in a little late, what we're looking at right here is what you would visually see on, let me pull it up, and I cra uh, I clicked the crab graph. That graphic, this graphic right here, mm -hmm. for the area you just put in, this is all the information you would give. Unfortunately, I guess the internet issue, like the choppiness of my internet has nothing to do with my dial up. It's just, you know, the storm. We'll, we'll, we'll blame it on winter right now because right now it's not working as well. Man. And um, I, I, I get love- I mad at AOL too. I get mad at AOL too, <laughs> I get- <laughs> I love how you unpacked all of that, um, Matt Martin. Um, hey. Real quick, I want to point out on that website too. You mentioned Jap Beetle, Jap Beetle. Yeah, I saw it. It had its so, own little tab. That was yeah. that was pretty cool. Like yep. it's so it's all, uh, where is it right friends, here? Boom! It's not just, Japanese not Beetle. Just a turf site. So let me read, and I probably missed it if you did. But this originated for an in farming. Hey, Mike, I appreciate you. And hey, Aunt Linda, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. That's the link for it. And. I'm gonna be honest. Out of all the tools that I've bounced around and I've seen, this this particular tool, I'm the most fond of already. Like this is my mm -hmm. favorite tool. There's some people in the chat that don't know what growing degree days are. Um, so could you just revisit that one more again for the people that came in a little bit late? Let's 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 somehow summarize oh, the last forty minutes yeah. in about three okay. minutes. And then we can move over to plant growth regulators. So I'll just go ahead and throw you and Cam up on the screen because he has some stuff for you. Yeah, he's got some stuff for you. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Get the get the get the symphony ready down there to play me off the stage when the red light starts flashing at three minutes. Okay? Cam's got Cut you. Me off. Uh, <laughs> So, I sure he does. I, I, I would I would take direction from Cam. So, uh, real quick. So, what we talked about uh, a few different things. Uh, number one, uh, what what are GDD or growing degree days? Growing degree days are a measure, a unit of measure in the phenological calendar. Phenology. Uh, go ahead and Google it. Check it out. P H E N O L O G Y. Phenology. Okay, phenology is the study of uh, physiological events that happen in a certain cadence uh, as we warm, right, and uh, gain heat within the growing system starting in spring and going all the way through. So this is a cumulative measure uh, that starts uh, on a specific date depending on what model we're looking at and is centered around a base temperature. So the quick way to figure this out, uh, other than going to the website, if you are uh, a write it down kind of person is it is the high temperature minus the low temperature divided by two. Okay. okay? And then we take that and we subtract our base temperature and this could be in degrees Fahrenheit or it could be in degrees Celsius. Okay. So understanding which model you're using, it sounds confusing, but if you start using these websites and see it calculated for you, it's easy to work backwards and then do the math by hand if you need to. Okay. So what this does, it gives us uh, sort of waypoints along the way for different physiological events with plants. It shows us when pests might emerge or pests might reach adult or damaging stages uh, in their life cycle. 
-hmm. right? And so understanding that, it allows us to scout better and be more responsible with our choices in terms of, you know, not only how we manage the landscape, but how we treat pests, right? Which are, you know, some of the most important things that we do. Turf, where, you know, it's taken on sort of a new life of its own here in the last, uh, you know, emergence of crabgrass for, uh, you know. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, the connection just fell off. I have done multiple lies from this location, and I blame this all on Ryan DeMay. Let me just formally... I will take <laughs> I will take it. I will take the abuse. Uh, I will put it. We'll put an address up to stand your nasty gram postcards to. I'll, I'll, I'll this read, is the first I'll time read mean Robert Palmer tweets. On it's we ever. Tweets on it's ever been episode. like this. It's 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 never been like this. I'm not sure why, but we're, hopefully, we're, hopefully that drop cleared everything up. Like yeah. hopefully it just dropped everything and it just cleared it up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're back. Right. We're back. So yeah, let's go ahead and um. So PGR. So let let's just let's start from the very beginning. We we just said PGR. What in the world is a PGR? So let let's just go ahead and start there. So uh, PGRs are plant growth regulators, and plant growth regulators come in many forms, fashions for a variety of plants. And you know the question always starts off with, uh, and I've been asked this by a number of different people, right? Even when I was back in the golf course, right? And uh, I can remember filling up the sprayer and on the golf course and people are like, oh, what do you put in the tank? Uh, plant growth regulator. What? I thought you guys <laughs> only applied fertilizer to make it grow. Why would you want to, why would you want to regulate its growth? That doesn't make any sense. And at its face value, yeah, it may, it, it sounds really stupid, right? Like, why would you want to take something that wants to grow naturally, right? by you know for every reason that it's on earth and then slow it down from doing that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right well uh there's a variety of reasons why these came about uh over the years and you know a lot of advances in um plant growth regulators started back in the 60s and a lot of those chemicals were for, for specifically for turf we're talking here were extremely harsh uh, and harsh not necessarily for the environment but harsh on the turf meaning that they basically just, th there was, uh, they went from polo to a brick wall in about a day, okay? <laughs> like, there was, no, there was no downshifting. It was literally just bailing out of the car, oh. rolling around the ground and hoping you live kind of thing, right? So uh, it was serious. I mean, like, and this is no joke, guys. Like, it, it, it was like, uh, you know, they still, there's the, probably like the OG one, like the really, really, uh, first one that became hip and cool and everything just went off the market, you know, after probably 50 years, a, a few years back. And it was, it's only really used on golf greens, particularly like that became sort of its uh, real uh, pointed and, and very specific use case. And it was to the point where like, you could put that stuff down and I'm not kidding you guys four five weeks, you'd go out there and mow buckets on, you weren't getting any grass like at all. Like Jeez. you could mow once a week and barely get any clippings in there. So That's when insane. I say shut down, I mean like done. And so, you know, some of that was, you know, trying to, to do different things and manipulate different things in the plant and other reasons too. Mm -hmm. And other places they use this stuff was like in right of ways, roadsides, you know, areas where it was hard, right. difficult, or almost impossible to right. mow grass. Right. But they still needed vegetation, right. For erosion control or whatever reasons. Right. So, uh, you know, fast forward to the 80s and 90s, and really what kind of spurred this on was really the golf boom, right? So we, we had a golf boom in terms of course building, uh, the redevelopment and construction and things like that, starting in the 80s and especially in the 90s through the early 2000s. So there was really a pretty good 20-year run there, um, you know, kind of basically 10 years on either side of Tiger winning his first Masters in 97 that, uh, blew up and in really fine turf management or golf turf management was taken to well, not even another level, but like another, another, another level. I mean, right. if you ask right. anybody that was on golf, golf yeah. courses, oh, it did. And, and it was like, it, it was uh, the old saying on the golf course, gentlemen, and I think you all appreciate this is uh, I remember working for a guy. He never said much. Like it was, this is an old timer guy. He was very good at his job. And, you know, one day we were talking about growth regulators in particular, and we we're talking about green speeds, like how fast can we get these greens? And I asked the question, I said, 
well, how fast is too fast, sir? And he said, Ryan, if you're going to have a prick waving contest, you got to get it up. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, he just drove off. He just, that was it. Like, that was the conversation. Like, that's that's like, the type of that, stuff that, you, that, you that, think that, about for the rest of the week. You're like, what? Oh, dude. What like, yeah, that? like 20 year old kid, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, what? But what? Uh, <laughs> the waving and, and where? Up where? Who? Uh? I mean, yeah, yeah, now you get it, but like he was, he was famous. I, I can see, I can see an old, I can see an old guy. I can see an old guy oh. leaned out of his pickup truck window, and then, and then Ryan's just standing there, and 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 he gives him, he gives him that statement, and then just and just pulls off. Facts. I'll tell you another good one real quick on this guy, because man, he was one of my favorite bosses. But you didn't ever hurt like he was totally like the the shadow. He had a huge job, you know. We was managing four, three, four, five different golf courses at that time. And he had been there like for 45 years. I mean, he, this guy was a legend in in the industry here in Ohio. And uh, I remember one time I was doing my internship there and, you know, we had this nursery green. So, you know, in a golf course, we always grow like, you know, a small patch of grass at greens height. So if you, have, you know, plug something out, you know, of a bird poops on the green, a golfer takes a divot out, something dumb like that. You know, you can go out and transplant, do whatever. And so we had this right. tiny nursery, like the tiniest one I've ever seen. It's like maybe 300 square feet, 400 square feet tops. So I go up to him and I'm, I'm, I got to do a special project as part of my internship. And I come up to him with this great idea. I've got it all vetted out. I got like a freaking PowerPoint built, like when PowerPoint really wasn't even a thing. And I show him like, hey, hey, uh, 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 sir, you know, I, I think we should build this bigger blah, 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 blah. Here's the budget. Here's what we're going to use. Like I had it all planned out, like five minute speech. Give it all to him. He sits through the whole thing very graciously, gets to the end. And he said, Ryan, you know. First of all, I want to thank you. That was that was impressive. You know, what you put together there was awesome. I really appreciate you doing all that. But I got to tell you something really important. And Cam, this is right here where he leans leans into me, right, and tells me. Leans across his desk, and I can still picture this to this day. Leans and he said, listen, if I need a nursery any bigger than that, my ass ain't going to be here, and I don't care. Because that means that the greens are dead, and... It's the next guy's problem, man. So we ain't gonna do that. That's my motivation. That 350 square feet is my motivation my to not <laughs> screw up. That's my motivation to not screw up. I got about 350 square feet, and then it's my ass and my shit on the driveway. So <laughs> little lessons like that take you a long way in this business. Little lessons like that take you a long way. Put a lot of perspective on things. So the PGR thing, you know, as golf got bigger, blah blah blah. You know, um, we found different ways. Uh, to, to manage turf in a better way. And what we found out was that through using plant growth regulators, we could manipulate it to be healthier. Uh, and mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, you know, a few things that we discovered through research, you know, starting about 20 years ago. Uh, number one, that with plant growth regulators, certain types of plant growth regulators, that we could actually increase the density and the lateral spread of uh, both rhizomatous and stoloniferous grasses. So, uh, you know, stoloniferous cool season grass, like, uh, you know, uh, creeping bent grass, for example, uh, Bermuda grass to a certain extent too, rhizomatous grasses like Kentucky bluegrass, okay? We can increase their lateral spread, right? Because we they weren't using as much energy to grow up and we could force that to grow out. The other thing that we too, figured out too is that we got this response uh, and rooting where, again, energy not being forced for top growth was actually going down to root growth. And we could manipulate the plant in such a way, especially in the spring, to do what we call pre-stress conditioning. It was this idea that, you know, through, you know, good water management and, pre and plant growth regulator use early on in the season, especially around spring flush where the grass just wants to go nuts and grow up and go crazy and you got clippings everywhere, you know, and your wife's pissed because you're out there mowing it every two or three days, like, that energy could be redirected down to roots and then you have better root system going into summertime and you can withstand a little bit more of that stress, right? So that was a big thing too uh, that they found. So some of those benefits existed. You know, some of the downsides were that they figured out, you know, certain foliar diseases, things like that might be a little bit more difficult to grow out of. Uh, and and uh, if you use too much of it, like there was too much of a good thing. And they started to figure this out. But as I said before, you know, a lot of this was centered around the idea that, hey, just like, you know, we, we've always been calendar based, even the pros, even the golf course side, you know, it, you know, uh, fungicides are still this way. Hey, oh, I should get about 21 days out of that PGR app. I should get about 14 days out of it, 28 days, whatever it was. It was all a and guesstimation. So 
it was well it was visual and it was like oh this gut feeling i got or they would look at their buckets and how much grass they were getting well so here's what started happening okay so these became really proliferated in, in their use oh probably around the turn of the century so you know 2000 ish y2k you know, when we y, y2K. the first time we thought the world was going to end it wasn't the in millennium. our lifetime it was the will it was the willennium the w- the- sure you know, <laughs> all right it didn't work out it was the millennium for like the first 10 years and i think after hitch or maybe others uh, he made a couple more good movies after that uh uh pursuit of happiness was a fine film i mean oh, like yeah, was, but it wasn't the millennium was, yeah. i think we can that we can nice pretty one. much put that to bed we're only 22 years into it and i think we can put that to bed yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so um you know going forward now uh, people figure out okay hey i'm using this stuff but it seems like i got to increase my rate to get the same amount of control the later i go into the right. season so this mm-hmm. whole idea came in all right you know i'm going to start at on fairways a, a normal fairway rate back then was a quarter ounce per thousand right okay and by the end of the season they said oh man you got to be up around like half maybe even three quarters per thousand to get this stuff to shut down and so these researchers started saying oh, wait a second why if we if we regulate the turf why would we have to put more down on the same you know biomass right the same amount of leaf surface right. to get the same amount of uh you know suppression of clippings that doesn't right. make any sense right okay so that was sort of the the the, the seed of the hypothesis that okay hey there's got to be a better way to quantify the suppression that we get and then also to understand uh you know the length of time that we get control all right so fast forward the research basically tells us this is that there is a period right where we get suppression and it varies based on the type of pgr that we use okay mm-hmm and uh essentially this is that we go through a period where the curve drops down right and we get suppression of you know anywhere from 30 to say 70 percent of our normal growth and then the what happens is the plant metabolizes that active ingredient and the growth rate starts to go back up and in fact it crosses over if we were going to look at this on a graph and I'll, i'll pull up a couple of pictures and send them to you here real quick turf but it crosses over on the graph up above the x-axis right and now we're actually in what they refer to now as the rebound phase and we're growing faster than we normally would because all that stored energy ends up going towards top growth so for for the people that aren't familiar with metabolizes let's let's break that down barney style real quick right when the plant metabolizes those chemicals that you just placed on the plant what do you mean by that well, imagine of it. Uh, okay, imagine it like a gas tank, right? Mm, and I when like I make it. an application, I fill the gas tank up. Except for it's not all the way full until I go about half about half a tank. Does that make sense? Like gotcha. my gas gauge doesn't read that. All right. So then I'm like half full, and I get down to the bottom, and now it says I'm full. Right? I get about you know halfway through that and uh, halfway through that period right of time. And now it says I'm full. And then quickly, as I go the other direction, drive the other half of that tank out, you know, um, it goes back towards empty. And so that idea, right, that metabolizing, what they found was a function of uh, temperature, mm-hmm. purely a function of temperature, okay, of how quickly that happens. So I see how this is coming talk full about circle. Growing, yeah. So growing degree <laughs> days, they said, well, shit. We know how to measure stuff based on a cumulative temper- temperature basis, right? That's just right. growing degree days. Mm. And yeah. here we go, right? So getting back to our original conversation, I said, okay, well, how do we quantify this? How do we figure out based on, you know, uh, whatever variables there are? So, you know, the, the species of grass that we're growing, uh, mm-hmm. the height of cut, they figured out was actually a really big deal mm-hmm. uh, because again the 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 amount or the volume of biomass that was there that they had to get AI or active ingredient into to make it all work right those all became big deals and so they modeled this out and they started off in growth chambers right so they can control basically every variable you know they can control uh, so a growth chamber is inside a building inside a lab controlled environment a controlled environment. It's a little six inch pot right. essentially with grass growing in it, mowed to a specific height. Make it go from negative 30 to 130 uh, in a few hours, mm-hmm. right? In terms of temperature. And they can control moisture, all that stuff, right? To really figure out what was driving this. And so 
basically what they found, you know, that we talked about that effect of, man, it seems like I got to put more of this stuff down. I got to increase my rate to get the same amount of control. Well, it wasn't the rate's fault. Mm -hmm. What they figured out is that as it got hotter, we gained more cumulative G or GDD, right? The more metabolism sped up. Uh-huh. So what we figured <laughs> out is that, hey, well, okay, we quantified it. And basically what we found was, you know, generally speaking, you know, uh, three to 400 growing degree days on a base zero Celsius model, right? So we're using all Celsius temperatures. Mm -hmm. Robert, that's why this is going to be great for you because, yeah. you know, we're, we're in the my land world, of the free man. home of the brave and the imperial measurement system. All right. And, um, you know, it, it, the, they're using all Celsius on this. So what ended up happening, gentlemen, is that, you know, in May, when we have lower temperatures, you know, lower, lower highs, lower lows, it might take two, two and a half, three, maybe even three and a half weeks to get through that period to where we actually accumulate 300 GDD or 400 GDD, right. right? So in the summertime, though, when it heats up, that might only take seven days, right? And remember what I said about that whole effect where we get to that point where, you know, we peak in terms of suppression and then we start going up. And we don't stop when we hit zero, when we hit normal growth, right? We go up above that and actually increase. So I'm going to send you, Robert, give me one second, because there's some really good stuff. And this is one of their newer presentations. Uh, um, you know, they've been doing a ton of work on this. Here we okay. go. Kicking my way, and I think, uh, I think Cam's got some very specific questions for you because he's oh, looking to get bad. into the... Plant growth regulation. No, ain't no my bad, man. That was all gems oh, no. yeah. and straight gold that you dropped. <laughs> What's okay. going and, on, and, Oli right. Pool? How you doing, man? All right. I'm and before we jump into any of whenever. that, go ahead, Kim. Like, I just, I just want to also say, um, let's just go back. I know one of the things you talked about where, where like there's different types of PGRs. Um, mm -hmm. So let, let's. Uh, Shout out to Matt Moore. Let's unpack that one a little bit. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So you know, uh, basically, you got a couple of things here to understand. Is um, they're both there's there's two main types that we look at in turf that we would use, especially in residential turf. Uh, there's more than that when we get into golf, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep this real succinct, right? So um, basically, you've got what we call, uh, what these are inhibiting is a, is a, a growth hormone called gibberellic acid. Gibberellic acid is really responsible for cell elongation in the plant, right? So cells elongate, they then divide, and then you get more growth, right? So it's controlling the production of gibberellic acid so that cells cannot elongate. And the, the two ways this breaks down is we have what we call early GA or gibberellic acid inhibitors, and late uh, G GA inhibitors. And it's just where it affects that process of that production uh, that, that kind of distinguishes uh, those two from one another. Now, a better way to break it down uh, in terms of what we see and what we use in residential turf, right, is uh, basically, uh, how do I want to say this here, root absorb versus foliar, right? That's, that's a, a better way for us to understand it, at least for right now and then we can talk about okay. sort of the effects of either one right so um let me pull up and see if i've got a good graphic that breaks this down and robert i will send this to you give me one second okay and i'm gonna get our next document that you have hot fired to me tonight it's all good though you know we're going <laughs> I know, I'm just. I'm becoming perfect. I'm. I'm no Jay Pink, but you know, I can. You do. I can be good. I was, I was about to throw a Jay Pink shot in there too. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh. definitely about to do that. Jay Pink would have had it done already. <laughs> he would have had it up. I mean, like I get a thing from him, and man, hang on a second here. So let's talk about first the, um, you know, these early. Or let's talk about late GA inhibitors because that's really all I want to go over. Um, because early P early GA inhibitors we don't really use too much, or I wouldn't recommend folks using them. There is one person in the chat here that is a early GA uh, 
PGR user, and that's Telly Coleman. And mm-hmm. I say that only because he is nuts doing what he's doing. It works for him, and I, but I would not recommend it to other people. He is uh, <laughs> he is on the edge for sure. So uh, let's talk about late GA. So these products here are uh, going to be foliar absorbed, right? So they are going in through the foliage, which means we have to have dry weather when we apply them, right? We need to have dry time so they can get into the plant. Uh, the two that we generally use, right, are going to be a new, right, and Primo Max. So Primo Max is also known as Teenex, right? Uh, and that's kind of a, a shortened version of its scientific name, which is Trinex and Pac Ethyl. Okay. So what you see here is uh, I don't want you to look at trim it because trim it's what Telly uses. And if you use trim it uh, on warm season grass, you're going to have some major problems. Unless you're Telly Coleman, who somehow makes it work, uh, it's a little dangerous. <laughs> you, I would not recommend using it on cool season grass unless you really know what you're doing. So we're just gonna forget about that for a second, okay? So uh, I want you to look at this. Ch- I want you to look at this chart here, and you know, follow that green line, and you can see here, Cam, as we drop down on that green line, we get to oh, 50, 50, 50 or sixty percent suppression, right? below our 100% growth rate, and then look what happens. Starts going back up, and then we cross over to about 300 growing degree days, and now we're, oh, what, 25, 15, 20, 15 to 25% mm-hmm. above our normal growth rate for a prolonged period here because we went 300 growing degree days with suppression. Let's say we go from 300 all the way out to 800, so almost double the amount of time, right, that it's in rebound. Yeah. So what this yeah. means here is that, you know, hey, it's a pretty short-lived response. Now let's look at a new, okay? So a new, we get and peak a little bit uh, lower here in terms of the suppression. We might get, you know, upwards of, you know, 65, something like that, okay? And as we go back up here much longer, we get another 100 growing degree days. But then look at the length of time that we go out, you know, we're 600 growing degree days before we hit rebound. So, or as we finish out rebound. So the point here is when we go to apply these things, we still want to be below that 100% suppression, right? Now, there, there is, like I said, there's too much of a good thing, right? We don't want to always be at the bottom of this curve, right, on the suppression side and constantly reapplying. Uh, there's an effect that they've discovered, too, when they really figured out the growing degree day model. They wanted to say, okay, well, how much is too much, right? Like, when do we get to the point of diminishing returns here? And... So what they found was that you can do what's called stacking. And when you start to stack apps, that means that you are still at or near peak suppression and you're reapplying and that doesn't turn out very well, especially on uh, uh, lower cut turf, lower cut you go, the, the worse off it is. Okay. So we don't want to get into that. So this model or this idea of reapplying then comes in uh, where Again, we use a specific number of growing degree days, and we try to apply as we're nearing that 100% or even growth rate, right, of the entire of the plant based on the PGR that we're using, and then go ahead and reapply. Now, again, okay, okay, three, 300 growing degree days could be, you know, 21 days in the spring and fall. It could be like six days in the summertime. So that's where the discipline uh, to do it and stick with it becomes very difficult sometimes for homeowners. And I get why, like, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not ragging on people that don't follow this. It's, it's tough and it takes a lot of discipline, but if you do it, you will see excellent results. So I'm, I'm glad this graph actually has the, a new on there because that's the route that I'm actually going down right now. So right. let's, let's, let's get in and, and let's start talking a little bit more. So, you know where I'm at here in Maryland. Uh, we're cool season. Um, I'm dealing with a uh, tall fescue and uh, Kentucky bluegrass uh, blend. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking at, I mean, I've kind of started doing my climate appraisal and I'm also get in and, and start looking at um, growing de- degree days and all of that stuff. So, are right. there any um so what are just some some possible recommendations i know some other people here in the chat that are tall fescue also that are looking at trying thinking about getting into those uh those uh pgrs around what period 
should we be looking at as far as that reapp application? And then, of course, there's that fungus pressure in the transition yep. zone that's going to be coming. When should we start looking at backing uh, off of that and 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 trying to judge all of that? It, yeah, there's oh you know this is complex complex stuff for sure because you know it's what we call uh you know here with our consulting clients we call it integrated turf health management right so it's not just ipm right it's not just the pest that we're trying to manage we're trying to manage the overall health of the turf through you know an entire season okay so when it comes down to this okay so let's figure out where so i think the question if we want to frame this for the viewers is okay where do pgrs fit into the overall plan well, knowing my constraints are tall fescue in the yeah. mid Atlantic, high disease pressure. Yeah. And let's be honest, man, you're going to push it. You're going to try and make it look yeah. good. Like this isn't just, you know, uh, Joe blow Joe six packs lawn in some, you know, yeah. swank ass subdivision. This is cams lawn. All right. This is elevated, elevated lawnscapes. Okay. Not landscape. Lawn for a reason. So it's very, yeah, it's very specific. Okay. So with that being said, let's talk about the question here. So as I said before, that spring flush period, that whole pre-stress conditioning thing that we talked about, it's an absolutely critical period uh, for, you know, think about, okay, the, the, the thing that's going to drive turf health uh, for the most part in terms of just, uh, you know, its ability to, you know, to grow, prosper, and do what it needs to do through stressful periods is the roots, Okay. So root depth, root mass, okay? Those are your two biggest allies in that fight. So when you think about it, okay, we're, we're always giving and taking root growth and shoot growth, right? So if I'm if I'm pushing top growth or uh, shoot growth, then I'm giving up root growth. It's at the expense of root growth, okay? So in that critical spring period, you know, when you start to, you know, do your first few mows and it's sort of just, you know, doing its thing. And then, I don't know, what's that date that for you guys there it really starts picking up and growing. I mean, sometime in April, I'm sure, but about like if you could pinpoint it to a couple days on either side of what specific date for me. Yeah, it's it's a it's like a late April. It's like a late April going into like a late April time frame. I say, give me twentieth a week before a, a, a week before week before Memorial or what is that Memorial Day? Yeah. No, that's at the end. Oh, of that May. late beginning that's of in May. May. That's late. Yeah, May. no, yeah. So it's 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 probably you give me. Uh, I'll give you a date here. Let me look at a, a calendar real quick. I'd say April thirty. April thirty. April okay. thirty. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I I think it's about the same here. Maybe a little bit sooner, a little bit later, depending on weather. But yeah, okay. So knowing that that's peak, right? That's when it's really, uh, you know, to borrow another uh, Matt Martin term, chuchin. I love that one when he says that it gives me <laughs> makes me giggle like I'm in sixth grade health class again. Um, you know, so I would say that once you get going into April and you've done your first like three mows, let's say, and now like you've done all yeah. the charity mow BS, like you're really mowing at this point. At that point, I would start yeah. making applications, yeah. you know, uh, okay. with a new it's not so much of an issue, but you know, if you get a lot of frost, things like that, sometimes you just got to be a little bit careful where you might see a little bit of bronzing, something like that. But I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a major issue uh, that it's not going to grow out of. So that being said, uh, you know, you're probably starting in, you know, maybe if that's April 30th is your peak, three or four weeks before that is maybe your first PGR app. And you're going to go with a new on that 400 GDD cycle. So that's when you start counting, right? And looking at, okay, yeah, hey, I started camera. here. And if you're using like GDD tracker, or if you're using even better, if you're using Greenkeeper app, I made an application on April 1st, and it was that this cumulative GDD, it's going to track that for you and tell you, hey, uh, Cam, mm -hmm. you're at 360. I can't remember what, I think it's like 10% usually of that total that it gives you an alert and tells you, hey, it's almost time to reapply. So okay. I'd apply on that and I'd go okay. all the way up until probably in your case, uh, probably like late May. So by Memorial Day, I'm probably ceasing those applications right. unless I've got really moderate temperatures. Like, and, you know, I, I think it starts to heat up for you guys. Same as here, you know, about June, it becomes really that uncomfortable. June, yeah. 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 That, that so, you know, you might be able to sneak a little sneak a little bit in there right uh of making maybe one more app 
But at that point, here's what you got to realize is once you get off of that, right? So let's say you make your last app Memorial Day weekend. You got 400 growing degree mm-hmm. days until you're going to hit the rebound, right? Rebound. And now you've got succulent, juicy turf that that brown patch or whatever else is going to be like, mm-mm. I'm going to get that, right? So that's when it's fungicide time. And that's when you can start your fungicide and get after it. Oh, so, I need to do. Mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I told you. That listen, reminded you me I of. Um, guest ever. Uh, what is it? It's I, Rick and Morty, the pencil. The pencil and Rick and Morty that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I'm off it. <laughs> Somebody. Oh, man. I'm off you it. Know, Turf three thousand. All right, hey Turf three thousand. I gotta come through kind of st- at least kind of white three thousand times. Huh? <laughs> well, I I, I personally want to hear uh, from. I mean, that was a lovely discussion. It helped a lot of people in the chat. I saw them like, hey, Good. I'm taking notes. Um, yeah, I mostly what was this Davis? What are you saying now? Davis had a few good points. He said mostly wants to try a new. For POA burn down. I'm going to tell you, Davis, it's not going to kill it. But it's what not, it will do, I, for me, I'm going to tell you what it did for me. In my backyard, I had a really bad issue with POA triv. And I came at it extremely aggressive right in spring. And what I saw it do was almost like this tenacity effect. Kind of where it stunted it and it stopped it in its yeah. tracks. It did this hard bleach out on, on me. And if you're not in the position where you want to completely reseed or reside, it's not a foolproof plan. But if you use that tool properly, it can get you somewhere. Ryan's shaking his head. Maybe he disagrees. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I, don't disagree. I think it's all that integrated turf health. So, like, yeah. Now you're talking about integrated, you know, integrated turf health and trying to make one particular plant in the stand unhealthy. Yep. Right. And I, you know, we talked about this uh we talked about this with several guests. Mr. Poopy Butthole. Grass. That's who it was. Yes, Nestor, you're my guy. He's three thousand with oh, me. God. That's who it was. It wasn't Pencil Vester. It was Mr. Poopy Butthole. When you yeah, anyway. If you know, I'm you know. Have to Google this later, you, you finally, you finally bested me. I have something I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Lost Poopy right Butthole now. Pants, you know. Hey, man, yeah. Uh, man. You gotta get with the times, like daughter, man. You gotta keep up. You sound like my three-year-old daughter talking. Hey, you gotta keep up, man. You gotta. You, you, these kids, they into I, all types of nonsense out here on these inner streets. I, I'm gonna call them inner streets. I, <laughs> so the only thing I would say there is like, if you're gonna do that. Um, my strong recommendation would be continue using a new through summer because uh, you want to use that heat to your advantage. Absolutely. Now that it's means that your existing, the your low desirable app. turf right. might it's, take a hit. And yeah. You got to be ready. Like Kerf said, you got to be ready to come back in there and oversee in the fall. But if I was doing that, here's my, my, my attempt to do that would be stick with the 400 GDD, uh, you know, intervals, number one, number two, uh, go with a medium or high rate. And the other thing too, would be shut off the water. I don't care what, you know, what you're going to do, uh, or what you're worried about with your desirable turf, shut the water off because POA that is injured through her, that is it's dry and gets hot will slowly fade. And it, it becomes a balancing act. I mean, we do it on greens, uh, you know, fairways, things like that on the golf course with PGRs, actually, like trying to rid uh, those uh, those stands of particularly like bent grass, right? So we're talking about cool season, but bent grass trying to get rid of Poe annual, and we use different PGRs to do that. And that's the way to do it is you, you got to stay on your rate, you got to stay on your timing, and you got to dry it out and really piss off that poa and mm-hmm. that's about your only hope and then like what you're saying turf is plant aggressive desirable species that can out compete year over year and you know you're not going to sh- you're not going to get it all all in one year it's going to be a hey, i got three or four percent this year <laughs> and no and now it's a 86 percent you know kbg or tall fescue mm-hmm. and you know like that that's mm-hmm. the gains that you got to realize it's not going to yep. be uh expectation management those, that's what that is right there yes 
It's not going to happen overnight. You got to put two years on that thing. <laughs> two years on it. I hear you. Um, I hear you. Yeah, but okay. So, All right. What you got, Cam? Before we so, shift into the polo. I, yeah, I, I just want to get into, um, I think, staying with the PGRs outside of just turf. So I think we kind of were was talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, in the growing degree days, it's like, okay, so is PGRs just for turf? And now we're kind of going to talk to our landscaping uh, and professionals out there. So is mm-hmm. there a benefit or what can they use PGRs for outside of just turf? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, on uh, trees, shrubs, uh, they're they're absolutely fantastic to use in certain landscapes. So, you know, uh, where we like to use them or where we recommend using them is uh, particularly shrubs that are difficult to prune, costly to prune. If you're, you know, you're paying, if you have a customer that is uh, paying the butt to work for, or if you have something that you just don't like to do, it's hard to be profitable at you know, you might recommend an upsell because you're definitely going to be more profitable on selling a PGR app. And so like, you know, for instance, we've got a, uh, a school campus, you know, we, we consult for uh, not only the athletic fields, but the entire landscape of the school. And it's surrounded by um, a bunch of arborvitae hedge, right? And these things are mm-hmm. big. I mean, they're probably 20 feet yeah. off the ground. Extremely expensive to have a company come in there and prune those each year and keep them, you know, uh, you know, in a hedge form that looks sharp, looks clean, looks good. And so mm-hmm. the first question we asked them, we got there, have you ever used PGRs before? And they're like, PRG, what? And what? What? <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> Same thing, like, why would I put a growth regulator on something that wants to grow? Right. So, you know, after seeing that, though, and going through that process with them, you know, it validated that, you know, not only are the hedges looking good, you know, for two and three years in some cases, right, depending on what type of uh, PGR we can use, but you know they're happy because their costs are lower, so yeah. I think it's an option. Right. You know, it's an opportunity. You know, in your if you're in business for this, you know, to upsell your customers on that. You know, not so much. You know, a lot of times I hear this from um, like full service landscapers, like, "Hey man, I mow. Like, why would I want to put a PGR down?" And Paulo, you probably know this. I mean, like, you fight that battle of it doesn't make any sense. Why would I do this? But if it's going to make the grass healthier, right, and I can get a cleaner cut on it and make it look better, right, manage clippings. So now I'm not out there, you know, in the springtime blowing for 20 minutes, you know, to try and clean stuff up. Like nobody wants to do that. That's yes. that's wasted yes. wasted time. The fuel, the oil, all that stuff's not, you know, that's not cheap. Preach, and so you, know, you start to break it down. Yeah, and um, I'm going to jump in here real quick. We got a pretty good question. PGR for lilacs. And then we have. I don't uh, know. Oh, we don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll be Evie. Honest. Hey, listen. <laughs> I don't know. And then um, I'm sure on the label it'll tell you. Sure. <laughs> sorry, we couldn't give you a quick answer though. I and wish. Then, I wish I could, but listen, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make up. I don't make up answers. So. There we go. Would they work on holly or bronze the leaves of the holly? PGRs. I believe, so I will this one I'm I'm fairly certain of that yes you can use it on Holly. Uh let me look and see. I'm curious myself now. Okay. This is the nerd well, in me. So. While you, and uh let him walk you into whatever question Cam hasn't stolen from him tonight cuz you know oh, Polo had Cam. he had a lot of questions but Paul, but 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 Cam he kind of so leaned awesome. he leaned in real hard so <laughs> Oh, and, and I held, and I held back. I'm be honest, he, I held back. I got so me and Ryan go had to talk uh, offline. Wait, oh yeah, yeah. This, 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 hey, he's gonna put, he's gonna be coming for another episode here this spring on our podcast. So you better believe you better come I'm, with some I'm, questions. All right, I'm looking yeah, to you. I'm, I'm, I'm with. Count, it. I'm counting on you. You know I got it. Polo, what do you got, man? So, so the, the the thing I want to ask, of course, that I am lower than cam so when you talk about using the pgr basically the easiest one or are the one that that uh people should really go with is the a new instead of instead of going with the t next as far as as far as the the, the end part as far as the the surge growth 
Yeah, I mean, I would say either one of those is fine as long as you can manage. You know, again, you've got shorter intervals with the Team X than you would with the Anu, right? So understand that. But just understand that if you miss your interval with the new, the rebound phase is going to last much longer, right? So it's sort of a give and take. Whereas, you know, with the T-Nex, that window of you having to reapply is shorter, right? So again, uh, just to, you know, it, it, what we know, I mean, I know we, we don't go by calendar, but I can tell you that like in our hottest days here in the summertime, it's no, it's nothing for us to push and Polo would be the same for you. Nothing for us to push, you know, up in the 20, you know, uh, 25 to even 30 range as far as GDD goes. So like you think about, it, you got a reapplication window of 300 GDD and that's adding up, you know, if you're getting 30, 35 a day, it's less than a week in some cases, right? So you got a little bit longer runway with the, with the Anu, but again, if you miss, it's a lot longer that that rebound's hitting. So like, if you don't get back out to it and you miss it, it's, it's going to go on even longer for you. So that'd be my only, only caution. I think you can use either one interchangeably. They both work in the same exact way. It's just one has, you know, a little bit more uh, growth suppression for a little longer with the Anu. Okay. So as, as far as for me and uh, let's just say the average homeowner, uh, and of course in my area, you know, I'm always going to harp on diseases normally and i and i said this on on uh on your podcast mm -hmm. your podcast your show we normally get sticky around derby around here that's mm -hmm. that's when you really need to be applying some type of fungicide because that's that's when you hey you talk about brown patch coming up and saying hey yeah i like that grass mm -hmm. that's, that's <laughs> when you really need to kind of that, that's that's your window uh, mm -hmm. in 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 louisville in louisville you know, i ain't gonna say the other word but uh w when you're putting down some a new and, uh, and like i said from my perspective and from the average homeowner is, is there a certain amount of applications that you're putting down before you get to that point or are you trying to get out past derby into june before we get into um the summertime when, when you're dealing with a uh, fungus so it's a great question so i would i would i would link link this directly to your uh disease uh your disease management and your fungicide program right so let's say i have no fungicide program and i plan to not do anything because i don't care whatever happens happens but i don't want to deal with surge growth and i want to have the healthiest grass i can going into summer and like i said roll the dice so in that case yeah, right about derby time would probably be my last application. Maybe again, like I was okay. telling Cam, if you have some more moderate temperatures, you might be able to sneak in one more app, but that's it. You're good. You're going to live with the results, right? Knowing that you're going to hit rebound in June and yeah, you might have some succulent grass, but you don't really care. So the other thing I would say is, let's just say that you have uh, a fungicide plan that you don't want to start until you absolutely have to, right? So in that case, right, I'm going to go up until, again, Derby Day. Maybe I sneak in one more app if I've got, you know, good weather. In terms of when I say good weather, I mean like moderate temperatures, you know, 80-ish, lower humidity, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll live with it and I can make another app, right, and ride it out until June. At that point, when I know I'm going to hit rebound, I'm starting my fungicide applications then, and I'm being preventative at that point. You can also be reactive in that case, but just know that you're going to have to really, really watch it. So if you're in a, if you're a lawn care operator and you got 40 to 400 accounts, mm, that's probably going to be a pretty tall order to do. If you got one lawn right. at your house, maybe you can be a little bit more reactive uh, in certain weather and, and things like that. So again, an opportunity there, if I was going to do it and not be in, and be on more on the reactive side, I would use a tool like Greenkeeper app, right? To look at the disease index models Greencast is okay. It's not as precise as what I'd like to see it. So in that case, you know, you can definitely roll with that. And when you see conditions kind of ramping up for a certain disease, you watch and then, hey, if I start to see it, I can treat it and get ahead of it. On the flip side of that, if I'm just going to be, you know, preventative uh, on the back end of that, uh, that PGR cycle, then I just start applying and I'm just going with my normal thing. So like, you know, um, 
you know, we were talking last night about, you know, as prop and triple three, six. I mean, those are two good ones you can mix in there for sure. And if you just kind of get on a rotation of those, maybe that's your rotation. The last and only other thing I would recommend, this is sort of like the tip of the spear. If you really have the budget, the wherewithal, and you don't want, you don't want to mitigate as many problems as possible is not only are you treating, uh, with your PGR early in May or up into early May and possibly one more app, but you're also preventatively starting applications in that May time around Derby time. Kind of what you, you know, we talked about on our show polo, where if you need to get ahead of it, you need to get ahead of it, you know? So, uh, it's really about where you want to be or where your customer wants to be with that, uh, disease management and fungicide program to really piece that together. I, I, I hate, I hate the one size fits all approach. I'm, I, you know, I mean, you guys know me, it's, it's much more nuanced with this stuff. So that's really what I would call. Oh, did we did I freeze? Good? You good? But that, that, I'm good. On the snow. I, We're back. We're back. We're going to blame it on the We're snow. Back. We're going to blame it on the snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you got to It's the, exactly, it's the, it's like that heat rock break, you're man. bringing. It's the heat rock you're bringing, <laughs> man. It's just so much knowledge is, is overloading YouTube right now. And they just can't. They can't take it. I thought, I thought we took a commercial break for an Apple commercial. Day. That's what I thought. We did. Tim, Tim Cook, where you at, bro? Burn. <laughs> Got gotcha. Ryan. I'm a Polo and Ryan. I'm glad y'all talked about that fungicide PGR application. I'm glad, I'm glad yeah, you yeah. Uh, you hit that because that was going to be another one of the ones that uh, that I I just had a couple of questions. I was like when I got the PGR down and I need my fungicides, I, I, we already know what I'd be dealing with over here. I'm, I'm not trying to get behind the curve <laughs> and, and I am, right. I'm going to mm. be, I'm going to be slinging some fungicides. And I think well, that was a big part of my, my success last year. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that too, because I, you know, I, I don't know if we're, if we're there yet or not, and I don't want to, it's your show, but you know, Turf, I gotta give you some. I gotta give you some grief, hammer man, because your disease management this year is gonna be so stupid easy. I mean, like, I know it doesn't. Oh, yeah. yeah, I doesn't, mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's gonna easy. be easy. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not easy. Like I can't just walk in a oh yeah big box store and rent an aerator. That's not a thing here. I have spent the past two months trying to figure out what my plan's going to look like come this spring. And I've literally had small cases of anxiety attacks over it inside of the we work in chat. Like to the point where Polo and Cam have ignored me because they're just like, Turf, we already talked about this. You just need to calm down. And I know that's what the silence is. It's just like, Bro, you talking about the same old stuff. I'm just not even going to entertain that. Anyway, it's snowing here. Like, that's how they're treating me. But I'm over here, like, going through, like, a social anxiety attack. Because I'm like, I just... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's it's, it's complicated over here. But before, before we slide into that beautiful segue you just gave us... Homestead in the hood, she asked the question. She says, so PGR should be used on the tree that is blooming when it is doing so in the middle of the winter. And I think what she's asking is, if we have unseasonably warm temperatures, early, late winter, early spring, when maybe you still have a threat of, of frost, could you use, mm -hmm. and if, I, if I'm not right, Homestead in the hood, jump in the chat and let me know but i think this is where you're going with it if you have a premature bloom on fruit trees could you use pgr to stop that i mean i don't know i think it's a really good question if that's what she's truly asking if not then i don't know what you're asking so just reframe that question i'm just trying to decipher that's uh, that <laughs> sounds like a legit question and I would say, hey, oh, I got my daughter down here. Hi, somehow. little princess. How you doing? No, oh, you're tired. <laughs> I know. So, see, everybody's everybody's trying to get in on this thing. Yeah, everybody, everybody wants to get a little piece. Everybody wants to be working. <laughs> so, uh, to that question, I don't. I honestly don't know. I would say that you know, based on what I do, what little I do know of fruiting trees and and blooms and things like that, probably not. Yeah. Uh, but 
Again, I do not want to make up an answer. I, you know, uh, I cut down trees for a living. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a negative or pejorative way. I'm just saying that trees and turf generally do not mix. And mm. I know what I like more. So but I do. I don't mind trees. Just <laughs> as few as possible and more grass. Right. Right. So I think I think that'd be something worth Googling and following up with yeah. your local extension office. I think between Google and your extension office, you can find the answer to your question. I think it's a really good question, though. Um, shrubs and trees. Okay, cool. Um, there you go. Transylvania, man. I appreciate you. He says, look for man. me in 2022. We're going to keep an eye yeah, out. Yeah, man. Baby. I got, I got a shout out Transylvania, man. He's, uh, <laughs> he's been, he's been helping the, helping the team out. I, yes. I appreciate it. I've seen, I've seen him around. Um, yeah. I, I definitely appreciate you. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're, seeing the value in the content value in the in the information that's being provided shout yeah. out man see yeah we got this it. running motto within the group right now and it's only real content is going to last all that other stuff is here today and it's is today. Gone, gone tomorrow oh yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. so we try it's, to provide I mean, thing is things that are going to last I, I, evergreen content man and I'm ever like, there we I'm, go I'm, I'm, i like that I'm, that's a that's a video that's, title that's right not, there take notes dude, i might steal that <laughs> i didn't come up with that at all i did not come up with that like that is a big thing evergreen so, content no like it uh you know i i think you always strive for that because you know we all face the same challenges year in year out it's like that, that's the that's the interesting part about turf is there's not too many new or novel things that pop up it's just like you know, you try to deal the best you can with all the things that come up. And obviously weather is the biggest thing that, you know, drives it. But at some point you got to make it. I'm I can't do that. I can't, I can't do this on camera. I would not do that. Excuse me. She's like, oh, look, look dad's, um, got, dad's got special, dad's got special drinks. How come I don't have special drinks? So, uh, we're having special drink envy. But no, man, like seriously, I, I, you know, I follow along with what you guys do and I, I agree and I'm not blown smoke. I say this is like, I think you're right, Turf. Like, just be real because, you know, we're all fighting the same battles. And again, we're not, you know, curing cancer or saving the world or anything like that. But there is an enjoyment factor. There is stuff that is, uh, you know, it just the intrinsic reward of seeing, you know, what you've done both like on a daily basis and then see that accumulate just like GDDs, you know, hey, yep, shameless plug. Hey, but full circle, uh, <laughs> full circle, man. But seriously, though, it's just you, you got to you got to accept that journey. And I think that's the cool part is like you just try to get a little bit better each year. And sometimes it works yep. out. Something doesn't. I always say this, man, it's like, I'm just, I'm just here enjoying, you know, my view from the top of the wave until I kill grass next time. And then, you know what, I'm gonna get washed ashore. I'm gonna get on my board. I'm gonna paddle my ass back out there. I'm gonna try it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yep. right. So you gotta and look at. and so. I, I will say, I mean, it, it's just something about like, and, and we joke about like my whole Pythium journey and, and all of that, but it oh, was no, I'm not something. <laughs> 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 but it, it was it was literally something special about that being that it was a a turning point of like it was when you get knocked off the board like literally i had done a full renovation everything lawn looked great for 80 percent of the season and then i mean it is 80 percent wiped out after that like it, it was one of those turning points of like you got to figure out what you're gonna do are you really gonna dig in and figure out what happened which is why when you were talking about disease earlier it was like mm -hmm. pick whatever pick whatever that you got to start somewhere pick whatever wiped you out and that's what i did I, I picked pythium i researched i figured out what it was identified it and i dug in as deep as i could to be able to say this is not going to happen again it may be something else but this is not going to happen again a and and claim you thank start you to layer that there. together you start to layer that together right and, it, and that becomes your approach and that's where that whole integrated turf health thing comes in is you keep layering that together and you put the pieces together 
Okay. Hey, listen, real quick. Yeah, we'll go we'll let you get a minute. You, We're gonna chop can, it up by ourselves. Can. Yeah. Um, what what do we have here? Hey, look, Transylvania. Come on, yes. man. You did not. Stop it. I'm gonna pull the map. Right, I'm about to pull the map. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, what are you doing man? Thank you. Stop it. Thank you. No, I don't know. I think what we're about to do, we're going to come up with a new line for merch here in the near future. We were talking about it before the live. Uh, we're going to come up with new glasses, new cups, a brand new website, website uh, full rebrand, not a, really a rebrand because it's going to be the same logo. And I appreciate everyone that's hung in here tonight. Um, with the technical Especially difficulties the technical difficulty. and i promise you it's 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 not me because we got websites that we were pulling up tonight that weren't operating properly so i'm not sure what's going on with that but thank you for your time thank you for spending it with us this evening and i hope you I hope you learn something you know um each one of these lives we do none of us do this by any trade we're learning as we go. No different from the long care journey. When we're doing these live streams, we just want to bring you quality content in a qualitative way, not necessarily quantity, but qualitative way. So I think that's more important than pumping out a whole bunch of videos all the time, but making sure when we do put ourselves in front of you, it's worthwhile. And I think that you're, I hope that you're pulling something from this live today. I'll pass the mic to my man Polo because he's had the least amount of time tonight to talk to the people. So Polo, what you got to say to people? What you what you working on over there? Because I know you you moving a thousand miles per. I'm just happy to see your face. I'm not gonna lie because you've been so busy that I didn't even know if you was gonna show up tonight. The chat has missed you, bro. How you been? We we have man. we have. <laughs> <laughs> just, just been working man just been working uh stupid busy and this the snow that we're getting doesn't make it e in, any easier you know um i gotta find out how to go 100 miles an hour on two inches of snow so um it don't stop you know, sitting, on some it don't stop. <laughs> sitting on some 28 right but exactly exactly but man this 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 <laughs> This year, man, it is, is, has been just so refreshing to be able to get some good information and to be able to, like we were saying, have those tools in the toolbox that you can be able to use those things and not kind of rely on this or that. You know, at least you can be able to have that at, at, at your within your reach. And it's, it's, it's especially with the PGRs, like what Ryan was saying, it's, it's, it's not so much as when you're going out there and, and you're and you're slanging grass and like he said when you're blowing a whole bunch of grass all over the place which is making making you know you stay there at the property longer but doing that you do get an even cut and not only that is you're getting some root growth you're it's still sustaining this good color mm -hmm. so that right there it's just it's just a good positive uh to to be able to use that now that's not a pitch to tell people hey y'all need to go start slanging this and slanging this no, no, no. okay you, you saw it too you, you can do <laughs> my oh, god all right, i didn't see anything whoo you you're gonna see it finish your point because i want to get after oh. this comment right here on the screen as soon as you're done okay but now, now go ahead i'm 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 through. I'm through. But so I'm I, gonna, that's, that's all I was saying. Just I'm going to make it larger good for you, and then we're going to bring no, our no. guests back. I just want everybody to be able no, to see keep, it. Keep keep going because keep going because I I want to address this one also. I saw that one too, uh, Turf. I I want Ryan to be back when we. Uh, well, I want to get a piece at it. Ryan's already back, but I want to get a I'm swing able. at it before we bring Ryan back, and then. He can speak his piece okay. on it as well, okay. um, but he's ready. He's just—I'm just, I'm just okay. giving him a couple of extra minutes to get his bearings together. But um, okay. Turnbull right. F U um, F dot U. I, I'm assuming you're a real <laughs> account. Um, I'm gonna start with that. I hope you're not a troll, and I hope this is a real question and statement because um, it's not really I, a question. I like the question, and I—I I like the statement. You say I rather mow three times weekly 
than to apply a chemical that stunt grass growth, long-term you will break down the micronutrients using chemicals. Now, yes and no, I'm with you. I would rather mow three times weekly. I did this video last season and it said before you mow and it was strategically geared at people applying pre-emergence because a whole bunch of YouTubers told them that they're supposed to apply pre-emergence. I'm guilty of that. And I placed myself in that column as well until I educated myself a little bit further. And I understood that sometimes you may not be in a region to where applying pre-emergence is necessary. And sometimes, and in some studies, it's shown that applying pre-emergence will do exactly what you're saying, stunt the grass growth. So not only do I believe in what you, you're you saying, but I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Now, if you look at my first video three years ago, it wouldn't be the same, but what, what do we get at with time? We progress. My God, what is happening what? right now? I'm about to like break out in the sweat. Um, wow. <laughs> but but wow. let me get to this point. Long term, <laughs> you will break down the micronutrients using chemicals. And, and I'm going to assume that you mean break down the micronutrients in a negative way based off the the pretense of the statement that you made before the second part of your paragraph, right. not necessarily right. saying that I just think that you're a negative individual or have a negative outlook. I just want to be clear about that. So the, the flip side of what you just said is you're right. It will break down the micronutrients using chemicals, but not in the negative way that you presented it. Applying your basic macronutrients in P and K and following a sound agronomy a plan like we've been discussing tonight as far as using GDDs. Guess what it will do? It will in turn release things in the soil over time to make them more plant readily available. So in your statement, which was a very valid statement to make, I think you are right to have those concerns, but that's exactly why we're doing this live tonight to further educate, you, better educate, educate you so you can make more um, sound decisions when it comes to the turf management in your lawn, garden, whatever it is you're aiming to do. And uh, without saying anymore i'm going to digress and i'll give it to my man cam and polo and we'll we'll go ahead and bring our guests back on screen but cam i know you wanted to get into this so you know go ahead and uh, address it i'll pull it back up on the screen in a minute yeah so i i mean i agree with everything that you said and i just want to just piggyback off of that a little bit and just say even outside of uh everything that we've talked about here um if you still have that feeling which is valid i mean i i'm i'm one of those people that i like to apply the least amount of chemicals to my lawn or garden but if when they are necessary i am going to apply them like if they're in a preventative measure if i have a disease that i know that is there that is present or I have the potential for it, i.e. I have history of Pythium, I am going to apply the chemicals that are required and necessary to prevent that from happening. I'm not afraid of that. But what I will say is if you still have that feeling, I recommend that you continue to do some additional research behind what actually happens. Um, as far as you're thinking about it, breaking down uh, your micronutrients and everything, this conversation right here, we're just recommending that you take an extra look at it, continue to do your research um, and make sure that you fully understand what's happening when you apply those chemicals rather than just saying, I applied, I'd rather not apply a chemical because that may not be the solution uh, because there's, there's a lot of benefit to some of the things, especially PGRs. There are a lot of positives that definitely come behind it. 
that actually increase and promote a healthier soil and a healthier plant. Because whenever growth. you're driving root growth, you're driving root mass, you're in turn also improving that soil at the same time as improving the health of that of that plant. And then, and then again, you got to think about it too when you're getting ready to, you want that root growth because you're getting ready to go into a hot period as far as the summer. Yep. You want yep. that, you want that yep. root growth. It's, it's, it's all going into it. You're going to have less water. So now if you, during the, right. during the spring, when you're uh, driving, you're, you're, you're stunning that top growth, but you're driving that, that root development now you've got stronger roots. Now you've got deeper roots when you have less water and the plants actually have to drive deep and pull that water from a lower standpoint in the soil. Now you have the, the roots to be able to do that. They can pull up that water. They can pull up those nutrients. Is Yeah, that, there's a lot of benefit to it, which is why I'm uh, just continue to do your research as I am also, which is why we've got Ryan on here. <laughs> this um, is our research now <laughs> two, two things i want to jump in here and say uh first off before we get into i think it's a great question great thought uh first of all i am i am fist pumping back here listen to y'all you guys are doing it man like you guys are taking what you learned and i can tell right that you know what you're talking about because the the true sign of an expert is somebody who can make it simple and teach it and you guys are doing that. So again, I, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm telling you, you guys are really providing a ton of value by, you know, not just regurgitating something that you read on an article and make a YouTube video out of it. But like, this is the complex nature of the fact that you cannot oversimplify this. You cannot uh, generalize it, put it on a calendar and just say, hey, do it like this. I mean, yep. I, I just I, I'm, I'm 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 super proud. I feel like I feel like, a you know, like a dad who just watched his uh you know, three three kids on the team hit home runs, man. Like I'm I'm just over the moon right now. You guys went back to back to back. Now the second thing is, listen, I'd like to know what the hell is going on here because I said stripper cake about 30 minutes ago. I leave for a few minutes and I come back and we're in the damn champagne room here. What is going on in this place, man? You guys are high rollers. Right. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we need to circle back for a minute because this guy, Transylvania Turf, my, yeah, uh, look, if yeah, I had yeah. Matt out right now, he would literally be in a pool of sweat. Like, th yeah. this would make Stop him so it. uncomfortable Stop that he would probably it. tell Jay Pink Stop to it. pull the plug. Pull the plug. <laughs> I love All you right, for everything so, that you gave us tonight. You donated to us tonight. We're going to put yeah, that yeah. money to good use. I promise you. It's it's not yeah, going to go right. wasted. We have a lot of ambition for the WeWorking team. We have a, a standstill account that's coming soon. We just, we're, we're working, we're taking it slow. We're, we're slow rolling this thing. You know, it's a marathon, like it. not a sprint. We're going to get there. I hope that you like this content. This has gone way longer than I thought it would. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't think we would be on this topic more than 40 minutes. That's what I said to Cam. That's why I had other topics to talk about tonight. But you guys oh. have been such an engaging audience. And you, as our guest, Ryan, has been a wealth of information that we just let this thing roll. Yes. You know, no, yeah, no man, need like, to stop a train that's just floating on and doing its own thing. But thank you very much, Transylvania Turf, and everyone else who's made donations tonight. Yeah. We appreciate right. it. David. We yeah, truly listen, appreciate it. Lot. And it will go to good use. I promise you, it will. I'm being compl I'm completely facetious right now, <laughs> but also a little serious that I will campaign for the first live We Work an episode to be broadcast from the Spearmint Rhino. What is and happening? I, Why? In Transylvania, we will go. We will go there. All right. Oh I God. promise you. All right. Now, I want to talk. <laughs> getting hot in that turtleneck sweater, boys. <laughs> I feel like I need to start an OnlyFans account right Martin. now. That's that's Yo, how I'm feeling. <laughs> what do you say? Davis just team. said it. We work in OnlyFans. Might be make might make money yeah, without yeah. show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. oh my goodness all right let's let's roll back let's roll back for a second okay yeah so 
the 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 topic at hand. So I, if I heard the statement correctly, it was I would rather mow three times a week. Yeah, let me go find. Apply chemicals. Let me go find. And, and again, that's a strong statement. I mean, it's a strong I, I'm, statement. I'm, and and there's not a lot of context there. So I I wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't so want to offend my, you, Turnbull, because I feel like you have a you have a concern in a statement that has flooded throughout a lot of minds, not just in America, but the entirety of the world. Yep. Point being, and I'll I'll get off of it and let Ryan go. I'm in Germany. I cannot use any pre-emergence. I can't get my hands on ethafumisate. And the only people mm -hmm. allowed to use glyphosate need to be licensed or have already had it in their possession to use wow. on their personal homes and lawns. That's the world we're in. And I don't really think it's going to change. I think it's just going to continue to progress. So these statements are valid and we want to address them appropriately. Right. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And so I would say, uh, you know, a few things to this is number one, uh, if you do want to mow frequently, I mean, let, let's be real here, folks. Like, uh, mowing is the most basic cultural practice we do to turf. My bar none. Mm -hmm. It's the most basic cultural practice that we do. It's also one of the most stressful cultural practices we do. And the number one reason that it's stressful is that because we do it too infrequently, right? Take off way too much. The one third rule, uh, there was a great study, man, and I can't, I'll have to go back and look for it. I want to say it was out at Nebraska with Bill Kreuzer, who's actually like the architect of this whole PGR GDD thing, a fantastic research scientist. He used to be at University of Nebraska at Lincoln. He now uh, is fully invested in running Greenkeeper app. So Bill is a great person to follow uh, if you're on Twitter or anything like that. He does a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, but, you know, with, with respect to the mowing, uh, the more frequently you can do it, the better turf quality you're going to have. And there's absolutely no question about it from a research standpoint, from an anecdotal standpoint, the more frequently you mow your turf, the better turf conditions you're going to have because you're only taking off fractions of an inch as opposed to inches, right? Okay. So if you want to go that route, I'd encourage you to mow as frequently as you possibly can. Now to the point of applying a chemical, Right. And yes, that is that's a big decision to make. And I think the statement was made that we don't want to uh, deplete, use up. I'm not sure what the verb was there. I can't remember but, uh, of micronutrients. And let's first take that. And then maybe what I'm going to put a little bit of words in the mouth. Maybe what he was talking about was microbial activity. I don't know. OK, so if it's micronutrients that we're talking about, it's a really interesting piece of the PGR puzzle that we did not bring up is that generally speaking especially if we stay on them season long so uh man, there's a couple man all this stuff's just popping in my head and we might be here all night fellas all right i hope you all brought a sleeping bag because we could be here for a while okay I, turf we paid i got, I got 50 a, bucks i got a sleeping bag and a, a, a fit right, so. we're good <laughs> yeah oh we good all we're right good. so couple of things there the pgr thing um as far as nutrients go you know the re the research the overwhelming amount of research that's been done here in these last 10 years has shown that you can have about a 25 percent reduction in the total nitrogen that you put out in a year if you can do it all year and to the point about the disease management thing and that we didn't talk about for polo and for cam if you're irrigated i would say that you can continue to use pgrs all summer long i would use them at a lower rate so that you can tighten up your frequency a little bit and respond to weather conditions a little bit better. But if you're irrigated, I, I would not be, and you're, and you're committed to putting down fungicides, then I would have no qualms about using them all year, okay? So that's where you get into that 25% reduction is because the grass isn't growing as much, therefore you don't need as much, you don't have as much biomass and you're not removing as much, therefore reduction in nitrogen. If we're using less nitrogen, that means that we're consuming less micronutrients, right? And all of our other macronutrients as well. So in a sense, right, we're actually helping things from a fertility standpoint by using uh, PGR season long if we have the capacity to do so with all the other portions or parts of an integrated turf health management plan, okay? So all that being said, I think maybe what uh, 
the gentleman was trying to say is maybe something to do with my I don't I don't think it's a gentleman. I'm a, I'm a just I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna hop oh, I'm in sorry. there based off this last statement. Okay. Female owned a hundred percent. It's a female okay, owned so company. She, I'm sorry. Okay. She. Well, okay. She. Okay. And I'm 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 looking. Fair? I'm pretty sure I already follow you on IG. But go ahead. My bad. I'm sorry. Okay. No no no. I appreciate you, you correcting jump? me on that. It's, Oh, no, go, go ahead, Ron. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, no, so uh, I was just gonna say, if it was in respect with respect to like microbial activity in the soil, uh, you know, the way in which this product works, it's not necessarily meant to kill anything. The way that it works is in cell elongation of a plant hormone that is only a plant hormone. Like you would not find that in fungi, you would not find that in bacteria, protozoas, and other microorganisms that exist in the soil. So therefore you should have a null effect of anything that actually does get into the soil. But if you apply it correctly, and this segues into another great question that came in the chat, what's the best uh, T-Jet nozzle, I think, to use for these applications, right? Because I got a video if we that. use the correct nozzle, if they're, hey, listen. Shameless plug. This guy, this guy <laughs> brought, he didn't just bring the receipts, right? He brought the whole bag with him with the, the receipt in it. Egg. The whole thing, okay? <laughs> Paper, plastic, double bag, anything you need, this guy's got it. Okay. Gotcha. So uh when I when I say that then it's uh you know, I, I wouldn't have any qualms about this particular chemical. If we talk about fungicides, insecticides, uh herbicides, different story, but in this particular case and the way that it works, it should have no bearing on what is going on with soil biology, quote unquote. I completely agree. Um, we got a pretty good question here uh, from Davis Polit. He says, or Polit, pol Polite? I don't know. Is it Polit, Polit, or Polite? Let me know in Polite. that order. <laughs> uh, I mean, how soon after you mow can you apply PGR, a new for me? I don't remember what it says. I, I want to say it says three days. I'm not sure though. Does anyone know off the top of the head? I don't know. Don't know off the top of the head for the Paulette. label. I know. Okay. I know it should be rain fast. I think uh, TNX is one hour. I think a new is four hours, uh, four so hours. that it, you know it doesn't need to get. It can't get wet. And mowing wise, I would say a day, right? But that's just me guessing. So I'm yeah. not sure what the label says. Yeah, and I realized that you were talking about the person that asked the question, which aren't. Two people. I apologies. So Transylvania Turf is a female, and then um, oh, cool. who was who was asking she the question? Me on, um, she follows me on Twitch too. Or, yeah, uh, no, I just realized I'm already following her. I just had no idea she was a female. And then the person with the really good question that like had us talking for the past 15, 20 minutes. They were uh, the name that I thought could possibly be a troll. Turnbull. Turnbull. F dot you. F dot that, you. That's good. probably yeah. I'm dot. gonna assume that's a dude. Um sorry. Yeah, the first time if you're you said not. that. <laughs> <laughs> a little quick and I was like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> the hot mic, Robert. That's a hot <laughs> mic. You don't say it, that. Wrong and there. Davis says Paulette. And thank you for the donation. We appreciate you. So um let me ask the chat something. Like, we're at a point that we've We've gone much longer than we initially intended to go, but there is something that I would like to show you guys if you're interested. And we still got a pretty good room right now. And if Ryan, if you got a little bit more time on you and you know the yeah, got, the co-hosts. I, like I got 15, 20 minutes or so. 15, 20 minutes? Okay. So let's let's hop into let's let me see. Let me see. Shit oh, pace climate appraisal form because I, I i really like that and i think that's another tool that everyone should see real quick and and i have mine to show everyone and of course we can give a link i'll put this link in the description of how helpful it can be and in my circumstances an individual that is looking to do a complete renovation on the scale that's not necessarily i mean it's a cool season zone but it's not a cool season growth period so let's 
Let's let's hop in. Never yeah, been this YouTube bad. Decision, it's Thanks. never been this right. bad. Um, Scott, right. man, thank you. But, um, what you got? Appreciate Cam? that, Scott. And right when the the Scott's Scott's always been uh, Scott's always been down yes, down, yeah. down for us and, uh, right. always supporting. Right when the uh, hopefully the, the yeah, it's coming back. back. It, it like it literally notifies me over here when it happens, but. I just don't understand why it's happening. Yeah. I have as many devices turned off in my own home. I like, like I said, we ran the Ryan Nor live and I played a whole flawless. bunch of videos and it was yeah. flawless. So I, it's just a bad yeah. night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's still um, good information. I do. I know. I know we were. I know we had lost a feed, but I, I don't know if Scott joined back in here. But I do want to say, make sure he heard that. Yeah. Um, Scott, man, we definitely appreciate that. We, we we saw the super chat. Definitely appreciate it. We know you're definitely a long time supporter, so yes. definitely appreciate that. <laughs> Must be all the yeah. snow uh, in um, Ohio. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and and your uh, your climate appraisal. Um, so. Do we want to tee it up a little bit? Yeah, let's go. Let's... Climate appraisal. So what it's going to take in, it's going to take a, a, a bunch of your averages here at the top. And then what it's really going to be able to do, it's going to, and when we say averages, it's going to take high for the day, low for the day, and then average that out over the month. You can go find that on, on some other um, platform that's already, I don't know which one you use for this one, Darth. Um, so you're going to get more of a bell shaped type curve. Um, so what we're about to see with turf, like it definitely going on. Scott, thank you. I appreciate you. I think I'm getting donations to update my internet at this point. Uh, oh man. Please. He's giving us the hook. I know. Every time I go back to it on on the tubes, it's just putting me right back in the same spot. I just feel like this is this is targeted. <laughs> right. right. Internet assassination. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're still here, thank you. We're gonna go ahead and let this thing ride out. Um, this we didn't mean for it to end this way, but thank you for everyone that showed up. We appreciate you. Good evening. Good night. Yeah. And good morning. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we we don't know what's gonna get captured in this in this <laughs> video on the replay. Um, we definitely want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone that donated. Thank you to everyone that contributed. Um, thank you for everyone that stuck behind us with the technical difficulties. Um, we appreciate it. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. we, we definitely do. Paul More Lord. to come. More to come. Yeah. Seasons around <laughs> yeah. the corner. <laughs> yes. More to come. Yes. We won't be stopped yes. because we always work. We always working. Always yeah. work. Polo. Shoot, it's, it I mean it's acting like it's acting right now that Ryan is gone. Um well, even though he was the most contributing factor of this live, I'm just I'm just saying it's, it hasn't kicked us off yet. Yeah, somebody said it's froze <laughs> for like five minutes. Yeah, it was froze so, for like five oh. minutes. Y'all see that. Yeah. And the, Davis, yeah. he's funny. He said, please deposit one dollar to continue to call. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we didn't even go over it, Evie, because it just kept, yeah. it just kept, there yeah. we go, turf truth cheated, and that's the truth. Boom. There you go. I, che <laughs> I can't help it, man. Yeah, right? man. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I mean, uh, we got we 20, we got 23 out. people in here. So even without Ryan, I feel confident that we can at least show it to you. We can show, in camp, you can go over your points that you were gonna make. So let's. Mm, Thing is, I was writing down a lot of information. So I just hope that a lot of people did that as well. We went over a lot of stuff. Go back and go watch it. And uh, hey, thank you all for being patient. Thank you all. Yes. Man. We apologize. Apologize yes. about this, man. Yes. All right. That's it, y'all. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Good night. Appreciate y'all for joining. We'll see y'all. Woo.